It's so stupid, it's positively brilliant. <laughs> Yep, Charlemagne the God here. Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Uh, and today's episode is brought to you by Squarespace. Yeah, From right. websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. There are no hidden fees or price hikes, and all websites are optimized for mobile. And it's so simple. Start with a design template and use drag and drop tools to make it your own. Head to squarespace.com slash idiot for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code idiot to save 10% off your first purchase now let's start the show let's do it baby sorry we had to leave you hanging last week um wax is here <sighs> you but you know the guys are busy man what you want us to tell you man yeah we've been busy you want to, your shirt says sit new <laughs> yeah we, we here, just huh? had that conversation and your shirt says sit <laughs> uh, new that's, <laughs> yeah, that's, <laughs> that's what y'all oh, were talking about yeah, yeah. oh you that, just thought i just came out of nowhere yeah. i didn't mean wax that's you that is no absolutely context. you. No <laughs> context. <laughs> no context. That is absolutely who you are. What's going on, yo? I missed y'all. What is that? That's your line? That's the merch? No, no, this is Lorraine Schwartz. Oh, okay, okay, She's okay. a uh, diamond jeweler. Uh, that, oh, yeah, and, I know uh, Lorraine Schwartz. Yeah, yeah. man. Um, last week was hectic, you know, but we back. A um, lot to talk about after a, a couple of weeks. You said you was tired. Why are you tired? I just been I just been moving a lot, man. I just crazy, been on the road. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been cool. It's Everything crazy when sleep don't matter. Yeah. Meaning, like, no matter what you do, is just like you, just like you're always tired. Yeah, always. So and you and down, like you tired to to from not doing anything. Like the reason I was on the West Coast because I'm filming this movie, right? <laughs> and like big heavy. I'm not, and uh, it's very small role, but really cool people in it. Like Eddie big. Murphy's in the film. Dope. Like Jonah Hill's in the film. Oh, There's, the Kenya Barris joint. Kenya, yeah. Oh, yeah, where, yeah. where, 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 where? Dope. Yeah, yeah. Kenya put me in it. Kenya's the fucking man. Wow. And, Kenya uh, be paying attention. Salute to uh, Kenya, you yo. slick motherfucker, you. <laughs> Salute to Kenya Barrett. <laughs> Kenya pays attention to what's going on in he our knows, world, he man. Knows. A shout out to Weezy, too, man. Weezy Salute put the, to Weezy. Yeah, yeah, put yeah. Put the yeah, plug yeah. in there. So, um, but um, yeah, that, that movie shit ain't for me, dog. Harry Ben Wait. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we talked you about know, that before so, though so, so it's like you're wait. there for 12 hours and you might be doing like 20 minutes of stuff total yeah. in the 12 hours you gotta do it though shows no no I'm doing it yeah yeah, yeah you gotta yeah, do it yeah, but yeah. I'll never do it again nah nah nah, nah, nah. Don't, say don't say that 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 you'll do it don't say that don't say that why cause that's I mean that's it's gonna happen for you Yeah. you know what I'm saying like yo there hasn't been a cool Younger white comic from New York since Adam Sandler, bro. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I hear that. Like this, your lane, bro. Put, like put you got to do way. it. Put Jerry it this Seinfeld. way. I love, I like what? Said Jerry Seinfeld. Said Jerry. The coolest. <laughs> the, I, I love, like what Kenya's doing, what like the writers are doing, like and and the director of photography, like being involved in every scene, even if you're not in the scene, but like caring about every scene, mm -hmm. that shit's dope. I could do that. Because you're making a masterpiece and you get to work with all these talented people. But like, just doing the side stuff, like taking off two weeks yeah. from doing this, like we're busy motherfuckers. Up, and word to go up, from up. like running 100 miles per hour like how we do, to running zero miles per hour, that... And like, Harry's been waiting too. Yeah, like I, I was like... <laughs> you know, Can you at least tell us who's in the scene with you? Uh, I did a scene with Eddie, bomb my ass off. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> what do you so, mean? So, when you got bad. nervous? So I got nervous? Just, not even getting nervous, bro. What? I just, yeah, I just, I was bad. Oh, man. I was you know bad. I love a good bomb. Do tell. Do tell. I thought you were going to pop out of nowhere. Like, Keep digging <laughs> your <laughs> grave, <laughs> Schultzy. <laughs> How do you bomb in a film, though? Son, the worst thing is you're, it's like, nobody's supposed to laugh because everybody's in it, right? Mm -hmm. But like, Kenya's, Kenya's just dope. He like, keeps throwing me like lines and scenes I don't even got lines in, you know? And uh, there was a scene with Eddie and Eddie was right there and I had a line and I, I didn't really know how to make it work. That's on me and I just got to be better at it, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, I knew it was kind of clunky, you know what I mean? And I, and I didn't, I, I- Let's do it over. Yeah, I did that. Okay. And then, uh, <laughs> do it in so first time I did it with Eddie, I say the line, let's say the line is, so let's go to the park then. Let's say it's that, right? I go, so let's go to the park then. And Eddie just goes, and just goes, yeah. <laughs> But is that the, in the nope. scope? <laughs> Maybe he forgot his lines. No, he didn't. No, no, no. Oh, he no, just didn't no. like it. So he... No, there was just nothing there. He wasn't supposed it. to react. Me neither. Oh, no, he wasn't supposed oh, to react. Oh, oh. So maybe it's because you've been on stage doing stand up for so long. Or, you know, we doing the podcast, mm. so it's always used to reaction. Oh, yeah. So maybe that's, that's what it was. That's actually, you know, what's interesting is like, 
I did do something that was kind of fun. I like got to like uh, just give a speech at the rehearsal dinner of the of the wedding, Jeez. and uh, that was fun. And Kenny just came up with like, yeah, just you know, like riff something, do whatever you want, and. That was fun, but I'm speaking in front of like a handful of people and the people on set. This is literally what I do for a living. I yeah, talk yeah, in front yeah. of thousands of people. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't been that nervous to talk in front of people since I started comedy. Wow. Like, and I'm and I'm looking at the situation. I'm like, why the fuck am I nervous? I do this every single week. Like literally at next day, I'm going to go perform for 3,500 people in San Francisco twice. Yeah. Wasn't nervous. It's a good feeling though, man. It was. Now, I'm going to tell you why it's a good feeling because, like, humbling. It's, it's humbling, but also, like, that's where you get your growth in those uncomfortable uh -huh. moments. Like, if yeah. you don't feel yeah. something about something, something's yeah. wrong. Like, yeah, yeah. I yeah. want to feel that. You're like, okay. Grown. And I, it's I, I, maybe I'm just sick in the head. I love having to do the breathing exercises and med give me 10 minutes to meditate before yeah. it's time for me to, like, pop out yeah. and do my thing. I enjoy that. Yeah. Like, it ha I, I love it. Nah, it's dope, man. There was some funny shit, man. Yo, Mike Epps is in it. He's the man. Yeah, Mike's hilarious. episode is so goddamn oh, funny, bro. No, Mike, Mike Epps, is hilarious. hilarious. Mike Epps thought, you know, Elaine from Seinfeld, Julia Louis Dreyfus, uh, he thought that she was a uh, Tina Fey. And, <laughs> I uh, love bro, it. <laughs> bro, bro, it was amazing how genuine I he was. I love too. it. He's what did he like, say? I love what's you on Hey, Thursday. what's it like working with Tracy? No, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, man. No, man. Yo, man, she should have hit him with. A goat, she didn't hit him with the all white women don't look alike. I wish. Oh, that'd have been amazing. I wish. <laughs> <laughs> nah, she was professional. Like I don't think I've worked in them in a while. Oh, that's dope. I'm mm. happy for you, man. Salute the anyway, kid. Anyway, it's cool. Great opportunity. Dope. Kenny's the man, and um, but it is one of those things. Like acting is way different, bro. Like comedy is being funny intentionally. Yeah. And acting is being funny unintentionally. Like well, you, you know, acting is trusting the writers, right? That's also true. Like, that's another thing. Like, there's certain dudes who was taking, like, liberties with the lines. Mm. But there's part of me that's like, yo, motherfucker, like, worked on these lines for a while. Word you up. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Like, I don't want to just come in here. I'm a, I'm a little part of this movie and disrespect it. So, you know, there was... Dude, you have to be a good liar. Say again? You got to be a good liar. Yeah, like, yeah, act. yeah. But, like, if you notice, like, when you laugh in movies, like, the character is not trying to be funny. The character is being sincere. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah, and it's funny because yeah, he's It's funny because he believes he, he believes, it. He's yeah, serious. That's the yeah. comedy. That's the yeah, comedy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's part. completely different than stand-up. Stand-up is going, I feel this way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this yeah, shit yeah, is yeah, funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And like yeah. trying to do that in a movie doesn't exactly, I don't know, doesn't exactly uh, correlate. You know, it's It a, shouldn't though. Say what? It shouldn't. I, I know some people, we know some people who, you know, are comedians and like, I even had to explain to these people like, bro, you're not there to be you. You're yeah. playing a role. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you go in there and do yourself. your line. Yeah. We don't need you to put any sauce on this. Nah. Like, what happened? He didn't get, he, he, he was on there and it kicked him off. Wait, 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 wait. I'm not saying, I'll tell Come you, on, man. Nah, 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 nah. that's his story Come to tell. On, man. That's his story to tell. Ooh, but you know, ooh, you get, ooh, ooh. When you do stuff like, you know, you got the script in your hand and you be like, Y'all think this shit funny? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Yo, that shit ain't gonna work. You know, what, I realize, what I realize that the professionals do is they get it right once how it's scripted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then they start playing. Yeah, that's right? what But they get it down once yeah. and then mm -hmm. they'll throw in a little thing and throw in a little thing. And then what happens is this, is like, if you throw in a little thing and it works, yeah. the director would be like, oh yeah, we kind of like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But now you're not disrespecting what was written. You know, but I think people need to remember when it comes to acting, people see things in you that you don't see in yourself. So I'm, I, I have you here because you're Andrew Schultz, but I also have you here because Andrew Schultz can play this role. Yeah. When yeah, I wrote yeah. this character, oh, an Andrew Schultz type comes in my mind. So let right. me reach out to Andrew Schultz. Yeah. yeah and that's yeah. fine. Yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. You're not here to be Andrew Schultz. You're just here yeah. to be an Andrew. I envision Andrew in this role. Yeah. Go play the role. Yeah. It's acting, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I'm playing a Jewish dude. Yeah. I got the great. Jewish star busted down, bro. Really? Yeah. Oh, so they're going to jump on you. What do you mean? You know how the internet is. They I'm trans-Jewish? They know they, 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 the same way they did uh, Amanda Seals with the AKA shit. Wow. Oh, they're oh. secure. <laughs> they go do the same thing to you. Well, what if I convert? But you, you acting, though. You lying. So they know you lying. Is Andrew Schultz even Jewish? That's true. That's wild. That's a good point. I anyway. Hate, I hate the internet. Um, let's get into some shit, man. Uh, Travis Gate, man. Astro World. Whose fault is it? Wow. What are your thoughts on it? It's, it That's sucks. the question. It sucks. It's horrible. It Ouch. sucks. It sucks. It's a shitty situation. And it's so easy to just blame him. 
Because like the more you kind of read about things, it seems like the concert didn't exactly stop. But then there's moments where it looks like he's, uh, you know, looking out for people and caring about them. But I think what you got to realize is that if you're performing in these massive concert venues, like you're used to seeing people pass out. Uh, yeah, yeah. every one of these people on drugs, people on ecstasy, people on mushrooms, like they're in the position where they could pass the fuck out, especially at festivals. Yes. These people have been outside in the heat all fucking day. Oh, yeah. They've been doing drugs, drugs. drinking. Yes. So it's not the craziest thing to see them do it. If anybody should be held responsible, it's the organizers that let this many people in or the safety the protocol that did exactly Fire. that didn't block off. Like, I, I think they breached the gate. It's like, yo, you didn't have enough security. Like, you're getting paid. Yeah. So that you secure the venue so that mm-hmm. not too many people come in. You're not overselling this thing so that this exact thing doesn't happen. It's not necessarily Travis's fault for being on stage and motherfuckers wanted to see him. Yeah. yeah. Called Astro World. Like yeah. Yeah. they know I, they do that to him every time they see him anyway. They they always burn rush everything. Well, he's so a rager. I mean, that's what he's, you know, his 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 fans are called ragers, right? I don't know. That's no, what I heard. So, yeah. like, you know, that's the type of stuff that, you know, he encourages at his concerts. He didn't at this particular show, but he has before. But I agree wholeheartedly with you. Like, ever so often, I'm old, right? So yeah. I've seen these things I ever so it. often. I remember, I think Pearl Jam, I think it might have been the early 2000s when eight people died at a Pearl Jam mm. concert. Mm. You know, I remember things like, um, uh, I've read about like the Who concert where like, not, that's not, a terror not, not so uh, yeah, not Ariana Grande t- Taylor. Yeah, Jesus, a, now, now I got to look at my. Let me look at my list. Why you, you ever just die Michael Taylor. Jackson's um, thing? I know people always passed out on his. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure people die at concerts all the time. Yeah. Oh, see, yeah, CNN posted this. This was a good one, right? They talk about how Astro World has joined the list of concert tragedies, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, David Cassidy at White City Stadium in 1974. 700 people were injured um, when it was just a crowd surge. Same mm-hmm. thing that happened here. It was a crowd surge at a concert yeah. uh, at White City Stadium in London. This was wild. John Davidson at the Supper Club. Uh, there was a sizable crowd at the Supper Club. A fire broke out. 165 people died. Yeah. <laughs> like 165 people because everybody rushed to exit at the same time. Yeah. The Who at Cincinnati's Riverfront Coliseum in 1979. 11 people died after a crowd surge of those attempting to get into the concert by The Who. Same thing. People got trampled. People got killed. Yeah. Um, Pearl Jam. This one I was talking about. Eight people died of suffocation and a ninth person died at the hospital days later at a, a Pearl Jam performance at the Denmark's Rock Slide Festival back in 2000. Guess where the trouble started? Mm. In the mosh pit. Mm. Uh, the Station Nightclub fire in 2003. A hundred people died during a concert by a band called The Great White in Rhode Island because like some pyrotechnics went off and it caused the fire and the mm. combination of flame smoking the crowd trying to get out, you know, cause people to die. This was wild. Uh, 21 people died at a techno music festival in 2010. 21 people died because of a stampede with more than 500 people in, injured. Right. A ghost ship fire in 2016, an underground electric music party. 36 people killed yeah. because of a fire that, you know, trap people in attendance. So my point with all of that is, I've never seen a situation where the artist is getting the blame like Travis Scott is. Now, if yeah. Travis was on stage Vegas. and he was inciting a riot and he was telling people push and fight yeah. and tear down the barricades and all of this other stuff, totally would understand. Luck if you bucked though. Like, that shit. I, I think, didn't see yeah. that in this no, situation. I didn't, I didn't see that in this situation. I mean, it looked like he could be a little bit more sympathetic to like what was going on in the crowd. But again, like you're not used to people dying at your show. So you're not even thinking that could be a possibility. I don't even know they're dying. Say what? He don't even know they're dying. Like how many times has he done after There was like an ambulance coming through and you know. Medics are on site at these festivals. Always. Yeah, but the ambulance is a little different, but. Never. Like the ER, the uh, the ambulance truck is always at these festivals. I think that the, the reason they're pushing the blame on him is because of like his branding is the mob. The rager. Right. Yeah. And, and like, not even like, like wherever he goes, he makes sure people know that the, there are people that want to see him. Like, so uh-huh. if people are running up and jumping onto a McDonald's, he's posting that on the Instagram or he's showing that, yeah. right? If people, yeah. if he shows up to like a, uh, an event in Paris Fashion Week yeah. and the mob rushes him, he's showing that. And seen that. That's what I'm saying. Is, that's what I get. Exactly. That. That's what you know about him. So like, and that's good marketing because it makes you feel like, man, this guy must be really popping if people are willing to like chase after him. Yeah. So 
he understands oh. the marketing that. And then what happens is when you reward something, people do it. So mm. I think people are going, well, you told people to rush you. You said that's what your fans do. And then they did it. And then people ended up dying. Now, I don't think that that's his fault. I, I don't think that that's his fault at all. Unless he was on stage encouraging it. If he was on stage encouraging it in that moment, yeah. But I get what you're saying. You know, yeah, prior, he might have so. been doing stuff like that. But guess what? If you're the venue of Astroworld, you should yeah, notice. Yeah, you got to protect this shit. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, man, you I should notice. Videos, they see how many videos. I'm, I'm just saying, like, I think people are worried right now about, like, Travis's future shows a little bit. They're like, will people come out to future shows? This yes. is only, no, this is only going to help. Yes. No, th this, this They're right coming. Here is, oh, yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> this is, I know this sounds fucked up. This is the best marketing for an artist ever. This sounds fucked up, but I, I'm being serious. Yeah. What kid right now, we're talking about teenagers. You what kid don't want to come to the show that motherfuckers are willing to die yeah, to be no, at? I think you're wrong on that one now. No, right. no, I no, think no, so. no, right. I think you're because wrong. You don't see some real good weed. If I see somebody pass out, I might want to hit that blunt. You want to hit yeah. it? Yeah. No, no, You no. see some weak shit, like, I don't feel nothing at all. You don't yeah. want that. Do I think this is going to stop people from coming to Travis shows? No. Do I think this is good marketing? Absolutely not. <laughs> like, that's Listen, the last thing you want is eight people dying at your show, the nine people. I think or that's whatever gonna get more people to want to More come. people are gonna want to see these shows. Yeah. They're gonna want to experience it for themselves, man. Like people are drawn to danger. Yeah. People are drawn to the things that excite them. And like mm. you have an artist who is right now so admired, so beloved that people are willing to trample over other human beings just to get close that's to him. That's not new though, Schultz. Not, not to your point, that uh, happens, but that's not me? new. No. People get trampled at these shows all the time. Michael Jackson. I mean, the last one you were talking about was David Cassidy. I don't even know the no, fuck no, no, that but, is. No, 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 but that's because there were deaths involved. But oh. these things happen at these shows sure. and people don't die. People get pushed down. Right. People get knocked over. People get walked on. I've like, seen Jay-Z live. I've never seen a single person football run a trampoline. Football games. The football games, they always fight. Jay-Z not that kind of football. artist, but I grew up that's, on. That's what I'm saying. Like I grew up on crunk music, bro. So what people like oh, man, and all that if you type, buck all little John shit, with three six but they're mafia not rushing the stage for three six mafia they're not rushing the stage no worse for, when they, three six mafia say I bet you won't hit a motherfucker hit a motherfucker the whole crowd everybody you better get the fuck hit. out the way it's a reason tear the club up was on CNN back yeah. in the day yeah. and they was like ban this shit from nightclubs <laughs> but those are calling commands you know yeah. what I mean like you're asking yeah. somebody to do a specific action one of my boys got he broke both his legs. Oh, yeah. How? He got trampled in the club. Wow. That shit happens. I mean, it's not like it doesn't happen. Like, you know, that's all. I, like, yes, the deaths are like super, super duper tragic, but fights happen at these shows all the time. Yeah. People get pushed down and trampled at these shows yeah. all the time. Yeah. People pass out from dehydration and exhausting. People overdose at these shows all the time. Mm -hmm. It's the death that's what, that what sets everything off. But I just have never personally seen an artist get crucified so quickly. Like this shit just happened this weekend. And they already took him off Fortnite. They got a petition for him not to perform at Coachella. I'm like, oh wow, I didn't know he was getting canceled for this. That's my point. Like, why? That's what I'm missing. That's like, wild. what am I missing? Oh, I didn't know he was getting canceled. I'm yeah, so removed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Guys, I'm a movie star. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think about Two weeks what you, you guys think about. Life. But even okay? even even this statement, right? It says yeah. Houston police warned. I'm about Travis. to get cut off this whole movie. Cut <laughs> it's, it's 100%. A, it says Houston police warned Travis before event. That headline is very misleading because when you read the whole article, the sheriff says yes, he warned Travis about you know just the. The validity Son. of the crowd. Son. You know what I mean? Son. But he but Aww. he said that it was a very respectful meeting and Travis's team and everybody, you know, what did it say? Where were the police when they stormed the barricade? That's my point. If you like, if you talk that, to Travis beforehand Sam, and you tell you Travis you have doing. concerns, then guess what? Up security or whatever the hell you do, whatever you know what they're doing. doing. They're looking out for themselves. You saw how much they were pushing that narrative of the dude walking around stabbing people with the fentanyl. injecting people yeah. with the fentanyl. Yeah, that's but here wild. it's like, why are you pushing that narrative? You're pushing that narrative because you want to remove culpability from you. You should have organized the event better. And by you, I mean the police or whoever the sanctioning body is to organize these large events. Like, you got to make sure that the, you are prepared for this shit. Yeah, and look at this, right? Read, read the statement. You visit the artist in his trailer, uh -huh. right? Before his show on Friday. So mm -hmm. he's already there. Uh -huh. And you got concerns about the energy in the crowd, Right. So what is he supposed to do? That's okay. my point. Exactly. Right, what we'll, is stop the, we'll stop the show. Like, I don't get it. And then it says, the energy I've been building for monks among fans who were drawn to see Scott. Yo, you've seen Astro World before. This is not, you know, Travis Scott's first role. Yeah, I was unprepared. No pun intended. Definitely. You know what I mean? It was unprepared. And you, you yeah. got 50,000 people there. I don't even know. You when know you what? have 50,000 people, how much security do you need? 
I don't know, but there's probably some number yeah, where it's so like one per hundred people. Yeah, yeah that's, that's what I would what think. Is. But yo, but here's the fucked up thing: is like how much, how much responsibility can the artist have? Like the artist got to pick the people he's going to perform with, pick the songs he's going to perform, worry about what show he's going to do. The artist isn't supposed to be walking around the fucking venue making sure that there's a certain amount of security guards in this area, yeah. a certain amount of security in this area. There's not too many people let in over here. At a certain point in time, you have to delegate that responsibility. That's right. And yeah. it's like, he's delegating the responsibility, be it to the Houston Police Department or whatever the, the venue staff is. And if they're not coming up, they got to be held responsible, yeah, not the artist. Play that's right. part. And it's that's my home. thing too. Is like, if you're Travis Scott, that's the other thing. People that say things like he should have stopped the show. He didn't. He, you know, if he saw what was going on, bro. Have you ever looked out? At, looked out of out at a crowd of fifty thousand people. <laughs> you know no. how much fifty thousand people nah, is? Shit is hella. Well, I, I do the know the fact how that much. he spotted one 50, person, <laughs> <laughs> like literally fifty thousand four hundred ninety nine. Yeah, Charlie is a wild one. shit sometimes. Yo, <laughs> yo twenty four hours feel like a day, bro. I feel like a whole day. Yo, do you know how much fifty thousand you know people? Fifty thousand people. <laughs> yeah, sorry. it's a wild guy right here. Dog. This guy's what, I'm, what I'm saying though, <laughs> look at that man. When I'm posting, yeah. how can I see what's going on in the back, yo? Nah, that's and crazy, by the way, bro. I'm 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 shocked that he saw. When he stopped the show, you know, and asked him to help somebody, I'm shocked he saw that person. Yeah, for Who real. you think? It, yeah, how do you think he noticed it? I have no idea. I also <laughs> think that we have to stop projecting our hate of celebrities onto these issues. We don't hate them, yo. We're just jealous. But that's like what I mean. Yeah, that's that's it. It. But, but that's hate that's to me. It. Jealousy, envy, hate, all of it is the same thing. So it's like people that are harping on this situation. You never like Travis Scott. Mm. That's all it is. Because there's no way you can't take a step back and objectively look at this. Yeah. Because uh -huh. if that was Drake, which it was Drake. It was Drake. It was They're Drake. They suing his ass too. Drake getting sued too. You wouldn't be on it like this. Mm. You yeah. just wouldn't. And because mm. of the type of music Drake makes. You'd be like, why are you rushing the barricade at a Drake show? Yeah, press yeah never had that's nobody. a good point. You know what I mean? Like that, that would be your mindset. Like, what do you rush it when Marvin's room was playing? Like, sure. yeah, but, <laughs> seriously. But, but the but also I think Drake has this like different connectivity with his fans. Like I think people love Travis, but they oh. view Travis as almost like a rock star. And then I think that they view Drake as like a podcaster. Because, like, He's Drake playing. is so, like, open and emotional in the music that, oh. like, you feel like you really know about him. You feel like you know about his relationships, yeah. what he's going through, what his team is going through, etc. Oh. Like, Travis Scott is... I don't know nothing about this guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Kardashian. I know what he dressed up in for Halloween, and I know that he got Kylie pregnant, pregnant twice. Yeah. But like, I don't know, like oh, two kids. Yeah, I don't know his interpersonal feelings at all. Like, what I, do you know? I just know he's a superstar. It's lit. Yeah, definitely. that's what I know. Rock, right? He's a superstar. He's a rock star. He's a superstar uh -huh. who endor who corporations love because he has mad endorsements. Yeah, no, 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 one hundred percent. And he deserves his success. I'm not saying he doesn't. Peace. What I'm saying is like you're more willing to forgive your friend, and I feel like people view like Drake almost as their friend. Like yeah. uh -huh. they, they know his like emotional baggage. Whereas a rock star, you're like, man, that'd be awesome. I'd love to live that life with you. But if you get fucked up, I'm okay with that because yeah. I got no real connection. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, you know, yeah. And I mean, listen, I get everybody's point who said like, you know, Travis encourages this. Yo, a lot of these artists encourage this. Yeah, I look at some of these festivals. Shit. I turn see people up. wilding. Turn up. Turn up. You know what I mean? Yeah. It just so happened that this one got a little too turned. Yeah, a little out of control. A little too turned to where people died. And you that's sad see and that's people tragic. Going crazy, man. You want to see people that's jumping right. around. Like, yeah, Merlin Manson and all of them. Like, what type of fucking crowds they have? Everybody. Had? And what I don't want this to turn into is an indictment of um, hip hop as a whole. You know what I mean? I don't want this. Do you think it's going there? Feels like that a little bit. It feels like that. Like when I see the sheriff say things like, and which is wild because even though Travis Scott is a hip hop artist, Travis Scott has one of the most diverse fan bases yeah, ever. Literally. And by diverse, white. B white. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? White. Asians. No, like he has sure. a very sure diverse fan base. Yeah, so I just feel good. like, and a lot of these festivals are driven by the hip hop artists. Like they're the ones headlining it. Like, like Kendrick's headlining, I think. Yeah, but I don't think there's an indictment on, I hope on not. hip hop because I know that there's all these like, you know, moshing and like uh, rock concerts, like even a lot of like the mosh pit, the thing you see in like Playboy Cardi concerts and you see it in, I guess, some of Travis's stuff is yeah. like, that's some rock and roll. That's rock and roll shit. Yeah. But that's my so point. So when stuff like that happens at rock and roll concerts, I don't ever, but I wasn't, old, well, I was old enough to remember. Maybe I wasn't paying attention. I don't remember Pearl Jam getting Neither do I just the remember slander. their beef with Ticketmaster. Yeah, I don't That's remember the them getting, I, remember. I don't remember people pulling them from shit and saying they didn't want them to perform. I remember they said they didn't want to perform for yeah. a while, which makes sense. 
you know, that's an emotionally draining thing. You, you performed a concert and all these people died at your concert. That's not what you do this for. But yeah, I don't know, man. I just want us all to like take a beat sometime and just sit back and look at things objectively. People want immediate justice, man. Word is bond. Yeah. Give they don't shit wanna, a beat. Yeah, they don't want to take a second and figure it out. Like, why are you thinking? The, why is he before? off Fortnite? Yeah. Why? Yeah, a game yeah. that actually has fighting on it yeah. and killings yeah. and everything else? Yeah. Why are you removing him from Fortnite? Yeah. Like, what, does that do? what does that do? What does that do? Yeah. Punish him. Like, I, I don't know, I don't, Does he make money off being Discipline? on Fortnite? I'm sure. I have no idea, probably. He does? I'm sure. Come on, gaming. But like, he has like a... I know when he did that concert, like people showed up to the concert and stuff like that. Yeah, they probably gave him like a fee or whatever to do the concert. I, I don't know. I just think that those are those like, um, I don't know the, the, the proper term, but like, uh, like those fake punishments. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> go to ISS you know I mean? for the like, day. You're, you're, you're on Fortnite. It, it's like yeah. it ain't even about punishing him. It's about like making you look good. Word is bold. Like, yeah. if your homie does something fucked up, you disavow. Even I saw the uh, the uh, the statement. I think it was the what what's festival he's performing at day and night or something like that. Okay. I saw them put out a statement and they read the statement like, you know, Travis Scott won't be performing at our our concert. Um, the safety of our people is first and foremost. Oh, they, but listen, they worded the statement like they're the ones who told Travis not to perform. Travis already said he wasn't going to perform at day and night. He said he was too emotionally distraught. Oh. So it's like, why? Was it the day and night festival, Alex? I'm not sure. It was one of the oh. festivals. Let's make sure we get the festival right. That's fucked up. That's like, uh, you didn't break up with me. I broke up with yeah. you. Word. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hating ass girls. Is that it? Let me make sure. <laughs> I want to be accurate. Because, you know. That makes sense. Man, People, fuck accuracy, yeah. bro. No, you got to be accurate. No, nah, day and night is fine. We're not Kanye West, bro. We don't have the luxury of not being accurate. Yo, Kanye was on one, huh? We have to be consistent. <laughs> Yo, is that it? Can you mm-hmm. say... No, who, it's not. Yeah, day and night. Yeah, yeah, day and night Vegas festival. Can you say who uh, cut Kanye's hair? Who Kanye said cut his hair? Because I can't say it, but it's one of the funniest things I've ever <laughs> Yeah. Son, it's I see, I see, I see the picture of somebody. Wait, wait, I thought he said, said he cut it. No, he said his but. barber was Edward... Scissor oh, no, no. He's, yeah, no, he said that's his name. <laughs> what is it? He said that's his name for him. Oh, what is it? He said Edward his name Caesar. is Edward Nigger Hand. Yo, that is one of the funniest things <laughs> no, I've he ever said, heard of my he life. He said that. Listen, Kanye West is... <laughs> he was on one. Top three most entertaining. Yeah, Bro, where was this Kanye? Of all time. What do you mean? I don't know. I miss this Kanye. This, this is, has always been this Kanye. Funny. When is Kanye jokes. not been funny? Nah, bro. No, you're looking at it through a different lens now. Talk to me. You're not looking at it through the lens of this is the most genius person I've ever met in my life. You're appreciating Kanye for just the entertainment value now. Yeah. Yes. That's what it is. I'm trying to think who else He's is like this. Someone you just, it's Trump. Like You just got to let it's him go and enjoy. Yeah, the only difference uh-huh. between Trump is Trump was president. But other than that, yeah. Trump, I always said if Trump wasn't president, he'd be the funniest man in the world. Uh, yeah. yeah. You'd, you'd die laughing at Trump. Yes. And Kanye's the same way. He's just entertaining. Like, Kanye's his whole go what do you think of the Drink Champs interview I just first of all shouts to Drink Champs Nori I, DJ EFN you. my guys I love their enthusiasm I was saying this on on Flagrant the other day like I think a lot of people especially in hip hop have seen your success and they've tried to like model their interviewing style off of you right yeah 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 and Speak on it more. Hey, no, no, no. You're right. I, I mean, I can't say yeah, okay, these things. Okay, let me give you, let me give you some flowers, bro. <laughs> if I say these things, you know I got to shut, they tell me shut the fuck up, be humble. Okay, let me, let me talk, let me talk for you. So like, you at times can have like a confrontational, especially earlier, confrontational, even combative, but it's, it's kind of like who you are. There's a part of you that is that, and it creates this really interesting tension and release, and there's these funny moments, and it's, and it's masterful, it's great, mm-hmm. it's great. So other people are trying to do it, and I feel like they're they're going. I just need a gotcha question. That's all. It I is. just need whatever, right? It's not authentic, right? Yeah. And I do think that it comes from an authentic like place with you, and I think that that's why it worked. And I think there's also times in those interviews where people like start slamming you, and you're not actually fighting back. It happened with me this week at Doctor San- with uh, Sanjay, Sanjay Gupta. Gupta. Yeah, it's like. I just got questions. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Motherfuckers mad at me. Like, it's funny though, because you got some people mad at me. Like, you, why, why are you pressing them so hard? Yeah, yeah. Why yeah, you don't yeah. do that to this person or that yeah, person? It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Maybe I don't give a, yeah, maybe, <laughs> or maybe I don't give a fuck about the issue like that. This yeah. is something I care about. So I'm yeah. asking questions. Yeah. So, so like that nature, I think, was really entertaining and, and, and we just enjoy it. And I see people kind of copy it, but it comes off inauthentic. It, it seems like they're just trying to catch a lick. They're like, ooh, mm-hmm. if I ask this fucked up question, yeah. that's going to go viral. They call yeah. it a hard it question. Seems, that's exactly what it is. hard question? Say what? What's the hard question? Exactly. Like they're, ju- they're just trying to find something. Okay. Yeah. What I liked about the, the Drink Champs guys is it's one, they're not trying to copy Charlemagne. They're actually... 
doing the opposite the, the, the opposite they're like really like enthusiastic and excited it's a celebration yeah it's yeah. a celebration but they'll still find ways to ask troubling stuff but they ask it almost in a way that you ask your boy you're like Bro, I got to ask conversation. Like, yo, yeah, I got to yeah. ask you what's good with this, right? And people know that because if you I think the if other you know thing, Nori, that's Nori. You know Nori. And yeah. Drink Chance has been around for like 7 years now. It's authentic. Wow. You're going to go in there on the Black drink. Effect network, no big deal though. Black Effect you know, got radio podcast. It is network. what it is, you know. I love Nori. Me and Nori have been doing business for a long time. People don't even realize. And, I, and the reason I love Nori, like when I was home unemployed, um back in like 2010 living with my mom, Nori hit me up the whole he had a mixtape coming out called Super Thug. Yeah, and yeah. I remember him tweeting like, "Y'all have always, you know, what I mean, been ahead of the curve. You know, when it comes to talent, I'm, I'm paraphrasing. But he was like, I've always been ahead of the curve when it comes to talent. That's why back in the day, I didn't want to do a song with Juvenile. No disrespect, I wanted to do a song with Lil Wayne. Mm. And he was like, so that's why I'm getting Charlemagne to host my mixtape. He said this on Twitter. I was trying to actually find that tweet the other day because mm. when you home living living at home with your mom, that means a lot. Catch an unemployment check. Yeah. You're like, damn, like yeah. this dude sees me, right? Yeah. And that's Nori. Yeah. That's an N-O-R-E. Like, I don't got Nori's a hip-hop legend to me. I think a lot of younger people listening right now don't realize how massive Nori was. Oh, there was on, a time man. where, what was the song? What, 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 that, what, what that whole first album. But before that, CNN. Oh, we was yeah, in Capone and Nori. Man, come yeah, on, yeah. Man. We was in my Nuri. man Jarrell house. But that wasn't regional? That wasn't a New York thing? Like, no. we know who massive they were in New York. We was in Monk's Corner, God Bless the Dead, my man Jarrell Garnett, yeah, yeah. International A. Rizzler. We used to call... Uh, the, the, the place Queensbridge. Like we used to call Salute to <laughs> yeah, Miss Jimmy yeah, Sue. Yeah. We used to call Miss Jimmy Sue Left Queensbridge. Rack, right? We was in there listening to Mob <laughs> yeah. Deep, CNN, all of those guys. N Nature. I don't even know if Nature was from Queens, bro, but anybody that was in that circle, Nas, yeah. we was listening to him. So we was all over CNN back then. N-O-R-E solo album. So whenever I see Nori, that's the kind of reverence I have for yeah, him. Like, yeah. yo, you was a part of my childhood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was yeah, wild yeah. when you think we was like close to the same age. Yeah. Like, he's only a couple years older than me. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? But it's like, I've always had that reverence for Dory, but so him saying that those years ago and then us going on to like me executive producing the TV show he had on the run yeah. eating to, you know, partnering, you know, with him to do, to be on the Black Effect, you know, podcast network. Like me and Nori do a lot of great business together and we'll continue to do great business. Yeah. Together. He's a, he's a great human. So what, I love the success. What did you had. think about the interview though? Oh, it was highly entertaining, but it's just like Kanye has the luxury of being one of the most inconsistent Kanye. individuals on the planet and nobody gives a fuck. And call it Kanye. Why do you think that is? I don't know. Van said that to me. Van told me that when we was talking about it this weekend, Van was like, I've told you this before, which he has. You have a problem with consistency. <laughs> Meaning? Because I strive to be consistent. Yeah, yeah. And if I'm not consistent, yeah, yeah. I got to tell you why I don't feel this way anymore. Yeah. Kanye and will start off an interview, <laughs> which he did on Drink Champs, talking about, you know, how how bad you know capitalism is and you know um <laughs> classism we got to get rid of classism and this and that fam. but then an hour later i text everybody in this group chat and told them i'm the richest person in this group chat <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. you keep referencing that you're worth nine billion dollars over and over and over yeah, but yet you're telling people not to get caught up in capitalism you're telling people, you they know, got it. Uh, well, how did he start the interview about classism? <laughs> That's all he said. You can't play my game. Yeah, yes. But, but my thing, you're telling people not to get caught up in classism, but all you do is name drop people in, of this elite status yeah. and nobody gives a fuck. You know what I think that like uh, we often harp on? We harp on uh, consistency when the reality is people harp on entertainment. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. People want to yeah. be entertained, That's it, bro. bro. It don't yeah. matter what you say don't as matter. long as it's funny or interesting. And here we are fighting tooth and nail to be <laughs> consistent and say the right Why? thing. Why? Just say the funniest thing. Why? Man. It gets you out of trouble say, and everything. What did, what did he do? He said Big Sean. What did he say? Signing him, Big Sean was the biggest Signing Big Sean thing. was the worst mistake of my life, yet you owe Big Sean like millions of dollars. But there's been worse mistakes, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> it can't be. But it's like, why are you shot. saying that about that man? Like, yeah, you, yeah. if he was your worst mistake, yeah. give him back all the money that you made from him. Yeah, yeah. Because he said, Big Sean says you owe him money, which I think was a deflection in the interview. I think it was a deflection. Like, before we even get to any Big Sean questions, let me give you this mm. to chew on. You know Ooh. what I mean? Which is, I don't like Big Sean. Yo, he didn't even give a reason. No, he did because he didn't support him politically. So yeah. what? He said he talked down about him. So what? 
Now, look, I know this man's mama, Kanye said, uh, uh, I've changed this man's family. And both John Legend and Big Sean, when I ran for office, got used quick by the Democrats to come at their boy that actually changed their life. And that's some sellout shit. And I don't rock with neither of them. And I need my apologies. I never heard Big Sean come at Kanye I, for, for his take on Trump. Only thing I've ever heard Big Sean say is Kanye owe me some money. John Legend definitely had some things to say about uh, Kanye's yeah. Trump affiliation. That was the other inconsistent thing. Wow. You can't say that about Big Sean and John Legend and me. He said, you know, uh, when, when when Joe Biden was on Breakfast Club and he said the whole you ain't black thing, he said, what does that show you? That shows you how close Charlamagne and Biden are, <laughs> right? Mm. And the conversations they have off air. That was the first and only time I've ever had a conversation with Joe Biden. Have you spoken to Biden since? No. Didn't yeah. speak to him before. I haven't spoken to him since. But my point with that you is... You have his number? No. <laughs> BP Harris, yes. You well, can, not you anymore. You text her? I used to, could have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not no more. And they switched up? I've heard, I've heard from her since she's been VP, though. Can but... we call that number right now and just see who picks up? Nah. I, you know what the crazy part is? I, I did text it one day and you get Yo, back... just call her, bro. You get back like this crazy... Play a Google Secret thing. Service, this number has been intercepted by the government message. Yeah. No. Nah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like one of these, like, you'll, you've never seen an error message like that in your life, oh. ever. Like, what it's was like, it? What did it say? Wow. Well, it, go on, no, it said something like, this number has been intercepted by whatever official. It was like a real official message to let you know, like, don't text this strange. shit no more. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That'd be funny if you followed up, like, nah, I'm just playing. What's up? <laughs> 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 Got my you. Point, my point with that is, Kanye West, you was in the Oval Office with a MAGA hat on, mm -hmm. literally, not figuratively, yeah. literally calling Donald Trump daddy. Daddy. Yikes. Literally saying, can I get a hug? Yeah. Literally saying that this man yeah. makes you feel like Superman. So much so to the point that Trump was uncomfortable. Trump was like, no, 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 you don't have to do that. Like, it was almost yeah. like... Nah, 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 I don't need no head, bro. Like, yeah. back up. You know what I mean? Like, wow. Like, no, but it was like wow. that. <laughs> it was like that. Wow. But, but look, like, but how, so how can you say anything about somebody being too close to politicians? But my point is, because everybody's going to say I'm making this about me. This has nothing to do with me. It's just <laughs> the inconsistency. And nobody gives a shit. That is really out of control. Yeah, but but he's so entertaining. He's entertaining. You're right. It doesn't matter, bro. It doesn't matter. Nobody cares. Nobody we cares don't about want the truth. Anything but entertainment. Entertainment. That's, That's the That's thing it. that we got. We so just much, gotta man. respect that about each other right mm -hmm. now. Like, and I don't think it's something we want to admit, but mm -hmm. that is a luxury of the first world. If yeah. you live in the third world, entertainment isn't as important because you need food and water and shelter. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? You need uh -huh. some safety, some security. Gotta Those things are important, right? Yes. First world. We pretend to care about all these other things, but at the <laughs> end of the day, just we just want to watch Dr. Umar Johnson. That's right. Right? Man. It doesn't, like, That's I right. shouldn't love Dr. Umar. I love him. I yes. love Dr. Yeah, because my life is so good, I can afford to love him. And it's the yes. same thing with Yay. I'm rooting for the school. You know, I donate every month. This yeah. Dr. Umar school? I donate every month. <laughs> no. I donate every How month. Much? How much? Say what? How much? I can't tell you. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. I want to do that too. I, nobody, you're right. Nobody cares about the truth when the lies more entertaining. Kanye West yeah. is entertaining. I've donated. And, and, and by the way, Kanye West. $100,000 to his you're school. You're a liar. Yeah. I, I, don't, believe, I don't believe you. You're a liar. I've donated $100,000 to his school. You're entertaining us right now. Say what? You're entertaining us right now. Hey, what is matter? That's going to be the headline. Matter. Andrew Schultz says hey, hey. he donates $100,000 to his school. I've donated $100,000 to his school. I've donated $100,000 to Dr. Umar Johnson. My brother. My brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. 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 Thank he does some good things. He does some great things. You know yeah. what I mean? He's done some great things and mm. will continue to do great things, but he is yeah. just one of the most inconsistent people ever. And you know what? Candace Owens said some shit that's true. what Candace Owens say? Everybody that Kanye popped shit to on that Drink Champs interview, he's going to eventually apologize. Yeah. Mm. He is the epitome of pop sh you pop shit apologize nigga just ask his. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> like, he is the epitome Everyone of it. Everyone's gonna be on his stage. Every say, single yeah. one. Like when Big Sean ye
on Twitter. I forgot what the whole story was, but Candace was like, you know, that, that's what he did publicly, but privately it was a different story. Mm. That's who he is. Like, mm. that's why it was so interesting to that. see him, you know, sitting there reading off the phone with Jay Prince this week. Yo. Now, he looked kidnapped. That's, but listen, <laughs> he looked kidnapped, bro. And listen, I love That was the, a hostage situation. I love the piece. I love to see him and Drake make peace. Mm. I'd rather see it. That's great music. I'd rather see them at a versus than a concert, though. But I, what is the Larry Hoover thing? They trying to get Larry Hoover out of jail. Larry Hoover's still alive? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Larry Hoover's still locked up. They trying to get Larry Hoover out of jail. Because, I mean, Larry Hoover's done a lot of great things in the community. And, you know, they feel like he's somebody that can restore a lot of order to the city of Chicago, which he probably can. You know what I mean? Because people look up to somebody like Larry Hoover. He's mm. a quadruple OG. I actually do want to talk to Larry Hoover's son about that. I'm going to hit Jay Prince about that. Like, I would love to have, you know, Larry mm. Hoover's son on one of the platforms and just, you know, have that conversation about, you know, why, why they want Larry Hoover home so bad because I'm sure he could explain it way more than, than I could. I mean, other than that being his father, you know what I mean? He wanted his father to see his grandkids, <laughs> but there's a lot of street political reasons that they would want him home and I think they're right. I think guys like Larry Hoover, guys like Big Meech, who these brothers in the street, you know, look up to for what they did in the street. Mm. These brothers have been in jail. They paid their debt to society. They're different people. Now they're different humans. Mm. Man, they can come out here and encourage so many brothers to take a different route. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? So, yeah, I'm 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 all for it. But watching him in that video with Jay Prince reading off the Fire. phone. Fire. Hilarious. He, He's a good reader. He didn't look like a free thinker to me. No, it looked like he was maybe forced to be there. That's right. Under <laughs> some circumstances. So if you're coming from honest. the heart with something. Yeah. You stay in the street. If, if you're trying to squash some beef and come from the heart with bringing people together, shouldn't it just come from the heart? Yeah. yeah. I will say this, though. If I ever get canceled and I need to publicly apologize, I want Jay Prince to be next to me when I do it. <laughs> <laughs> that is the trend. I don't care what I'm getting canceled for, but Jay Prince needs to be next to me this when I do it. I need to meet that man. Man, Jay, Jay Prince, you're amazing. invited to any good one God. of my shows. Good. When you do Houston, you should tell Jay Prince pull up. I'm actually performing at Dr. Umar's school in the inaugurate, the uh, the, the, the first, the, the opening day I'm performing <laughs> you, you, you at the, at the at big the school. Check? That's where I'm filming my check? special. <laughs> yeah. I got the big check. Yeah. So it'd be awesome if Jay Prince is there. But seriously, I mean it. When I Yo, did the, the show in Houston. The world, if you hold up the big check and where it says four, it says to say N word. <laughs> Whoa. Wow. Yeah, Dr. So Umar. I love Dr. Check. Umar, bro. <laughs> Dr. <laughs> Umar. But no, the next go. time you're in Houston, you should invite Jay Prince out. Jay Prince is the one. I tried to. Individual. I want him to come to the show in Houston. But really? I didn't know how to connect directly to him. But right, I come on, hit you for, I hit Jay for you. All right, shit. That's my Jay's a, a great brother. I've, ain't nothing like being on the receiving end of a Jay Prince OG call. Really? That's right. He's You've not, had a couple of those, right? Put it like this. I understood what Kanye was going through when he was like, <laughs> Firm. I understood what Kanye was going through in that moment. You know what I mean? I understood what Kanye was going through. You know what's funny, though? I like how, I like how Jay waited for, for Kanye to disrespect Drake to do something. Like, Kanye was running for president. Kanye was saying, make America great again. Like, Jay didn't sit him down and make him apologize or nothing. <laughs> he goes at Drake a little bit. And it's like, we might need to have yeah, a conversation. But no, it's big, no, no, no. It's bigger than Drake. Because I'll tell you something. When Kanye did this whole Oval Office thing, yes. I remember Jay Prince posting something on Instagram. And Jay Prince was talking about how, you know, I, I forgot how he worded it. But he was like, regardless of what you think of his antics, the fact he stood in front of the president and said, we need to free Larry Hoover was big for him because Larry Hoover's, that's Jay Prince's guy. Oh, you know I didn't what I mean? Know that. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's Jay Prince's guy. So yeah. that's a, co a cause that's near and dear to his heart. So it's just like anything else. When you see somebody standing in front of a, uh, the highest elected official in the land yeah. and they're talking about a cause that's near and dear to your heart, you're going to salute him, uh -huh. as you should. Like, I don't understand why we can't have nuance, why yeah. we can't be objective about things. Yeah, Kanye probably said a whole bunch of things you don't agree with. Yeah. But if you said one thing that you agree with, why can't you just give him props on that? Yeah. And keep yeah. it moving. So it's like, yeah, I mean, in that situation, he was absolutely 100% correct, you know, in doing, yeah. what he, in doing what he was doing. Yeah, we got to get Jay Prince on a pod. Can we get him on a pod? Jay Prince would definitely do the pod. That would be fire. Nah, Jay he's done, Prince. He, he's, done, he's done pods before. He would do the pod. This is your invitation, sir. Please come on the podcast. Spit some game. Salute to my guy, Jay Prince, man. Uh, what else we got? You want to uh, take pay some bills and come back? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, okay. Let's take another break, man. To talk about another one of our sponsors, man. And this sponsor is near and dear to my heart, okay? Because it's called 
Talkspace. You already know what Talkspace is, man. Talkspace makes it possible to speak with a licensed therapist, all right? Right from your phone, tablet, or computer. And unlike traditional therapy, you can message your therapist anytime via text, video, our voice. It's 100% secure and stigma free the way therapy should be. All right. At Talkspace, your privacy and security are number one. All right. That's their number one priority. The app puts you in a private room with just you and your therapist. All right. Send messages 24 seven and get replies throughout the day. No need to wait for a weekly appointment. The reason I love Talkspace is because a lot of people do, you know, feel like going into a psychiatrist's office this makes them feel strange, especially when it's their first time. You know what I mean? And if we're trying to eradicate the stigma around mental health, maybe just maybe not being in that therapist's office, laying on that couch or sitting on that couch is part of eradicating the stigma. Maybe you just want to pick up the phone, talk to somebody and feel like you're kicking it. All right. That's what Talkspace does. And Talkspace's encryption and added security features keep your conversation fully protected. Whether you struggle with anxiety, depression, self-doubt, or anything else, sadly, I have been impacted by all three. Talkspace gives you access to the help you need to move forward. Getting professional help isn't weird or weak. It's smart. Because sure, your friend might know a thing or two about electricity, but would you let him rewire your house? All right? So don't leave your mental health to chance. You can't just roll up a blunt. You know, grab something to drink, sit around and kick it with your partners and think that's going to help you deal with your trauma. Okay, you don't want the amateur advice of well-meaning friends and family. Talk to somebody who's trained to help you make lasting progress. Join Talkspace today and start moving forward with a single message. Just visit Talkspace.com and get $100 off your first month when you use promo code IDIOTS at sign up. That's $100 off at Talkspace.com, promo code IDIOTS. Now. Let's talk about Squarespace, another space, all right? But this space allows you to create domains, websites, online stores, all right? Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. You'll find what you need, whether you're showcasing your work, blogging and publishing content, selling products and services, announcing upcoming events, or anything you can dream of. Buy, or anything you can dream of. Buying a domain from Squarespace is easy because there are no hidden fees or price hikes. And get to know your audience with their analytics tools. Those include insight on page views, traffic sources, time on site, audience geography, and more. It's all so simple. All right, it's all so simple. Start with a design template and use drag and drop tools to make it your own. All websites are optimized for mobile. Your site looks great on any device. Every Squarespace website and online store comes with a suite of integrated features and useful guides that help maximize prominence among search results. These SEO tools are paramount. Head to squarespace.com slash idiot for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code idiot to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com slash idiot. Use offer code idiot for 10% send off your first purchase. Let's get back to the show. All right, let's do some church announcements. Mm. What um, you got, Schultzy? Infamous tour. We're in uh, Chicago this weekend. Oh. Chicago Theater. Uh, we had a second show. A few tickets left in that second show. Go get that. Madison as well. And then we're adding new shows. Those going to, oh, uh, Radio City Music Hall. First show sold out. We added a second show. Go get those tickets. That's at theandrewshows.com. And then Toronto. Toronto, Toronto, Toronto. We had a show booked um, in March at the uh, Massey Hall, the legendary Massey Hall. And Drake said no. <laughs> you know who said no? Uh, the venue. Really? The venue, after the whole Chappelle thing, the venue said they got a new board and that they need to be very selective with the people <laughs> that they have perform at the venue That's and they good. don't want to offend Ooh. people. Fuck that you pussy good. shit. You should feel good about that. For real. Nah, fuck all that, bro. So they you said, should feel good about that, bro. They said yeah. they watched a Netflix special or something like that and there were some questionable things there and I was like, the Netflix special? <laughs> I was like, yo, don't don't listen to Flagrant Two. Don't too. listen to Flagrant. Please don't Come subscribe to that now. Patreon. Don't not do it. <laughs> so, um, so uh, instead of canceling the show, I said, "Fuck it, let's." Uh, or canceling the date, I said, "Fuck it, let's let's go bigger. Let's go. We're gonna do Meridian Hall. Um, we're gonna do. I think it's March fifth. TheAndrewShows.com tickets go on sale Friday oh. in the morning, ten a.m." Few other venues going sale as well. In Toronto, that's in that's in Toronto. How big yeah. is Meridian Hall? I think it's thirty five hundred or something Ooh, like that. Okay, okay, yeah. you got that. You yeah, got yeah, that. How long yeah. the tour till? Oh man, we're gonna go until basically Radio City's April sixteenth. Oh, so we got time. We got, we got and then we have Atlantic City after that, 
And then uh, special time. Well, special is already in the books. So now we got it. We're just editing special now. And then ideally, I have enough new material by then that we could drop the special. And What's then special dropping? Hit Europe. I don't know. I haven't figured the date yet. We just needs to be, everything need to be right. All right, all right, all right. Everything need to be right. Wax, you got any stretch announcements? Yes, sir. Go to um, whoswax.net. Go get your gummies, man. I got a um, subscription, too. Uh, you get a hundred uh hundred dollars, you get ten gummies, you no know, free shipment. Uh, we got Bully and the Beast. Yeah, make sure y'all go see that on every Wednesday. You know what I'm saying? Patreon on Mondays. Uh my Who's Wax is in stores, is in my new stores. I appreciate uh Herb and Joy in Fresno, Purple Star in Fresno, um, Elevated in South Francisco, and Dr. Green Thumb in LA. Appreciate y'all, man. Y'all keep on getting these dispensaries, keep grabbing that Who's Wax, y'all go get that. Word. Mine is always simple. Go to blackeffect.com and subscribe to uh, all the podcasts on the Black Effect Podcast Network. Um, make sure you watch The God's Honest Truth Yeah, every Friday night at 10 p.m. on Comedy Central. Uh, salute to everybody that's been screaming on Paramount+. Plus. We've been killing on Paramount+. Plus. We're always trending on Paramount+. Plus. And make sure you go to the merch store, man, and get you some of this <coughs> good merch. What size you wear, Schultz? Oh, you know, I got all these. GW. You did? Yeah, you sent me a package. I did? Yeah, along with like some Charleston Chew and shit. Okay. <laughs> you did, right? Get you a, can, I'm can GWP. I get one? Yeah, you know me. I want one of those. You want a Decrackify America shirt? This is I, Decrackify I want the G, America I like the G, shirt. I like the G one. My man, uh, Ed Sheeran wanted one. Ed's going to be on this week's episode, by the way. Ed's gonna, uh, legend. Yeah, Ed's going to be on this week's episode of The God's Honest Truth uh, and... And Soldier Boy. Soldier Boy is going to be on this Friday as well. Oh. So tune in. Yo. 10 p.m. on Comedy Central. Make sure you scream on Paramount Plus. You know, Ed watches Brilliant Idiots religiously. Really? Oh, my God. Ed, what up, man? Oh my God. I'm a big oh, fan, bro. dude. My nah, God. Nah, Yo, like I, I didn't tell you that story. Appreciate you, Ed. What? Where I went to Ed, uh, Ed Sheeran concert twice at the Garden the same week. No. And uh, I went the first time because I'm a huge fan. And I was dating a girl at the time. We went. Yeah. She was a big Two fan. Two different dates. Right? Yeah, yeah. And then he was right. doing like three shows there. And his shows are unbelievable. It was yeah, just fine. him. Like he uh -huh. creates, By himself with that damn guitar. It's yeah. Unbelievable. It's crazy. And like he has these loop pedals so he can create all the different sounds that he needs to create the song. Oh, it's great. So I go the first time and there's a lot of like younger, you know, teens and that kind of stuff. So I'm about to go for the second time of the week. And I was like a little bit embarrassed. I'm like, yo, I'm a fucking 30 something year old dude. Like I can't go. So I wore my Knicks jacket. Oh. Right. In case someone was like, yo, Schultz, what you doing here? I thought it was a game tonight. I thought it was a game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so, so I go and I sit in this section and we're up close because I'm a fan, right? Yeah, like we're like 12th row or something yeah. like that. And you got a stunt for the other new chick? No. It's all the same people that was there no, two you nights two before. Girls. You had two different girls with you. No, no, no. I'm taking oh. the same girl, but all oh. people are obsessed with him like the fucking Rolling Stones. Yeah, yeah, so they yeah, go yeah. to every concert while he's there. So I'm trying to be incognito with my Knicks jacket, but all the girls, these like teenagers are like, Excuse oh, me, I you know say? you from Girl Code. You're back again. <laughs> You're back again? <laughs> Your second time. So I couldn't even cap like I wasn't a super fan because they saw me two days earlier. I'm a ginger. I'm a ginger, bro. His name is Joint. What not do you mean? That's not the name of his team? No. Oh, okay. No. What is it? What I don't they? know. The I Gingers? No no, I'm making this up. I don't think you could say it with a hard R, dog. I think you got to say <laughs> Ginger. Like, I don't, I, don't think, I, don't, I don't know if you can do that, bro. My like, Ginger, my yo, Ginger. Yo, 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 chill, fam. Like, you don't know their struggle. You don't know their life. Come on, dude. Ginger. Let me tell you something about Ed Sheeran. Yeah. Ed Sheeran is one of the purest souls I've ever met in my life. Word. Just a great... Human, like yeah. you know who he is. Like, just, like that, that, that is wild, right? Unbelievable. Like, do you know your Ed Sheeran? Do you know who you are, bro? And that's my, that's my guy. Like, that's my guy. Like, I yeah. love that dude, man. He's a good, pure soul. And you be around Ed sometimes, Respect. and things come out of his mouth, and you be like, "Who the fuck are you, bro?" Yeah. <laughs> like, like we had him on Breakfast Club this week, and he, he, rat, well, he was, we was talking about. Uh, he was saying how you don't feel like he's accepted in the pop world. Yeah. But just conversations we've had before, right? And but he, he's a young, you know. Uh, English dude so of course hip hop culture has been his culture I mean he's all he's into all genres of music but yeah. he loves hip hop culture Yeah. so I remember like this was some years ago man we might have been in the UK this might have been when we, we stayed at his crib but he was um, he said uh, we was we was drunk because you know he's got a he's got a pub on his estate yeah though like a pub <laughs> okay we got I got a bar in my house yeah yeah he's he got, got a, a whole pub, pub that yeah, you have to like yeah yeah. Put on clothes and shoes to go out <laughs> to, right? Yeah, yeah. So we're in the pub and um, 
he just, I don't know how we even got on the subject. He started rapping Gangstar right where you stand verbatim. Wow. And I remember just looking at him like, the fuck just happened? Yo? All the words? <laughs> Not all of them. I mean, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, no. yeah. But, but he, verbatim. Like, right? And the Jada Kiss parts and the Guru parts. No, he didn't say the N-word. That's all I want okay. to know. <laughs> yeah, right. See, he all didn't the didn't say the N-word. Real talk. <laughs> hey, but if you want to say the N-word, donations. To Dr. Uma. <laughs> <laughs> donations. <laughs> donations. 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 Don't lie to them. Okay? Yeah, yeah. Somebody I'm fucked just up. saying, Ed, there's a way. Uh -huh. Frederick Douglass, Marcus Garvey. But he, he rapped it verbatim. And ever since then, I just was like, it was not only does this dude really love hip hop, he's just a different type of dude who embraces any and everybody. Yeah. That's all mm -hmm. he cares about. Are you a good person or not? That's it. And you, and you, yeah. and you know where he gets it from? His parents. Mm -hmm. His upbringing. You see the upbringing. Yeah, yeah. You see the yeah, people yeah. that he has around him. Like, yeah. and, and the fact he still lives in his hometown that he grew up in. Like, just, yeah. I'm telling you, man, staying grounded is a motherfucker, yo. Yeah. And and he, all, yeah. He's definitely one of the best at it. It comes across like he really loves music. That's it. You know, like I think there's a lot of people that are like they're not really students of the game that they that they have chosen to uh, exist within, and like they could get exposed. But there are people who are just obsessed. Like, mother, there are basketball players who are obsessed with basketball. They watch every game. They watch mm -hmm. the old games. They know the vets. They just know everything. And he's always struck me as a guy who's like obsessed with music. He is. No, yeah. he is. I, he thought, can, he... I thought he just had a bunch of just talent. He yeah, does. That too, yeah, though. So it's easy to him, like Iverson, as I'm saying. Yeah. No, that's like very true. Like he's like, you know he's just, saying? he just oozes talent. It's like God put all that talent in this redhead <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. kid yeah. from the UK. That's yeah. why he's just so humble. Like, this is my life. That, I that's it. about this. Yeah. Writing. I had to work hard for this. Playing the guitar. Yeah. And encouragement from his parents. Like, it's, it's, he said when he was young, he told his dad, I'm going to do a song with him and then one day. And his dad was like, yes, you are. Yes, you will, son. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's all a kid needs. Son, that's yeah. what my parents were like. My parents never said I wasn't going to do anything. Wow. And I'd say the craziest things. They'd be like, yeah, yeah, that, that sounds good. You, you think it's a that. UK thing? Ain't your, ain't your people from... Oh, my mom's from the UK. But yeah. honestly, oh. t the culture in the UK is not like that usually. Really? It's, hey, don't be too... Don't don't try to be too big. Mm. You know, don't be better than who you are. You know, but you know better than anybody else here. I think that's why my mom left. You know, she grew up, you know, she went to Martha, you know, porn in Scotland. And then she That's left to kind of get away with that so that she could actually become herself. She could spread her wings. She had to come to America, a place where that was rewarded. Like you have big dreams here in America. People love that shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Insp it's inspiring to hear those stories. Yeah, yeah. But if you come from certain communities, especially like working class communities, I'm sure it exists here, too. It, they look at you like. Hey, do you think you're better than us? Yeah. You trying to leave this? Yeah, you know, that's true. I, 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 I see a lot of that. Over here. What do you say? The total opposite. Like, but they're, they're about to nothing. You ain't going to be nothing. It's like, oh, I'm going to prove it to you. Oh, that's because you was kidnapping people. Yeah, stuff. you like, shouldn't be kidnapping people. That's different, right? I guess. Yeah. You know, it's different. It makes sense a little bit. <laughs> no, that's different. I, I, my dad used to tell me I wasn't going to be shit either. He probably yeah, was right. But, yeah. but he used to tell me if I didn't change my ways. That you weren't going to be shit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I already left yeah. before you could say that. I yeah. just heard that. That's story. why I don't believe, like, you know how, like, every motherfucker that makes it has this story about some teacher that was like, you're never going to do anything with your life. It's Dude. like, ain't no teachers out there like that, yo. No. I had oh, a lot of shit. those too. What are you <laughs> talking what you about? They said to you, whole life. Yes. they said to a child, yes. they said Listen, to a child, you're going to be nothing. Out of school context, and told though. my mom that I'm not even going to be nothing, so just let them go through school. Context, though. Yeah, context, context is, I, we were the bad kids in school. Literally. Yeah, I was night a bad school, kid too. Bro. I was in night school. I was a bad kid too, but these teachers knew. No, I had two. I had, I had a, no, to your point, I did have teachers like, I got to salute Miss Brevard. I love Miss Nicole Brevard. You know, Miss Nicole Brevard. She was actually a librarian at Berkeley High School. And she used to always tell me I was wasting whatever talent she saw in me at the time. She was like, you're too smart for this shit. Yeah. But you that's know? different than All you're never going to make it. No, but no, I'm saying she was one that was saying the opposite of what the other motherfuckers were saying. <laughs> the other motherfuckers was like, you're going to jail. Yeah, yeah but that's, jail. you might go to jail. And you did. They were right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But no, they meant like long prison time. It was like, yeah. you're going to end up in debt or, or jail. jail. And by Period. the way, they weren't wrong. Yeah. Based yeah. off the lifestyle I was living, they yeah. weren't wrong. They had to talk to us like that. I get it. My dad was like that. My dad was like, I remember my dad telling my mom, man, let's just kill him and get the insurance money. <laughs> because, because he going to die anyway. He was like, I took him in. I took yeah, him that's out. fire. That's fire, <laughs> dude. Nah, that's fire, dude. I I'm like serious, that. though. Let's just kill him just and get him the go. insurance money because like, yeah. he's going to die anyway. Gonna die if you're going to anyway. die anyway, you, they could have just put life insurance on you and then got collected the but same. But that's what it was, though. It was yeah, literally bro. like, the life I was living, Reckless. they was like, he gonna end up in jail. See the he gonna end up in dead. He gonna end up dead anyway. Yeah. So fuck him. 
Yeah. I, you know, my, my moms aren't usually like that. No, moms moms will, always try to hold that last. No, you got to be really bad for the mom. That's to say right. You. I, I always tell people that when you see a mom cut somebody off, boy, yeah. that person yeah, you ain't took shit. her bingo money. But bro. Nobody, but her yeah. bingo. <laughs> you make her look bad in front of her friends. Yo, that's but, all you can do. Here's the thing, though. It's like that context is never put in the story. It looks like it was just this innocent kid going to school, and then there was this social studies teacher who was like, <laughs> "You know what? You're never going to be anything. Nah, You're never going to make wow. it." It's like cat. Stop it. You were yeah. fucking around in school, my, driving my this school poor teacher crazy you while she tried to teach you some shit. And then she was like, fuck you too. Yeah. You keep doing yeah, this shit. You're yeah. never going to be nothing. And you know what? You stopped doing that shit. And then you ended up being something. So that teacher was right. I knew I was a terror. And I was a terror because I was, everything I did was mental. Mm. It wasn't like the kids and like wax was beating people up. You know what I mean? Nah, mm. I was putting boogers and doodle and stuff on people. That's too. physical stuff though. No, I couldn't do really. that. Yeah, yeah. But you were doing like mental torture. Mental. Yeah. I, I could have yeah, been a co leader, cool. bro. You I think? Yeah, easily. Yeah. Bro. Easily. And that's why I remember uh, uh, a assistant principal I had named Miss Miss Sadie Brown said that one time. She was like, this guy just he can just he could just make people do things. He just manipulates people into doing things. <laughs> like, I yeah, remember yeah, my them phone saying that. years and years ago in, in Columbia. When I was living in Columbia, you told a bunch of people to uh, text my phone, uh, call my phone and say, Wax is nasty. It never happened. Broke my my phone, broke, bro. How? Where did I do that? Where did I get a, a, a handle on all these people? I don't even know. That's what I'm saying. What like, the fuck are you doing? Like, how the fuck you get all these people to call my phone and say wax is nasty? I'm not I was saying in Columbia. I just don't remember it. You know how long ago that was? <laughs> I, don't, I don't recall. Yeah, my phone, I remember that shit. I don't recall. Back then it was just stupid. We just used to do stupid shit. <laughs> it was just like, that's really what it boils down to. Like, when you really think about my life or just our lives in general, our lives. Too much. Play too much, doing stupid shit. I have, I just, I just stopped doing stupid shit for no reason. Yeah. And by the way, I haven't. No, I still didn't. do stupid Everybody shit for didn't. no reason. This dude, this, this <laughs> day, Sean made, Sean yeah. made he got me on things, and I just don't even tell him that I didn't get got. And thank God, because he's just that crazy. <laughs> what? Like what? I'm not telling you. I'm not gonna tell you because you think you got me. <laughs> oh man! So you guys just let him think he got the dust. That's it. Bro, I did that at the TV studio the other day. The other day, right? We sitting in the writers' room, and. Uh, <laughs> Rachel, our showrunner, Rachel was doing something. And then one of the writers comes back, my man Dre. Dre's like, yo, Rachel says she's going to be here in 10 minutes. I'm like, yo, let's all just leave. <laughs> let's just what? all go to a whole other part of the building. So when she comes back, she don't see us for no reason, right? I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, so yeah. my dumb ass, we, we, I don't really know the Daily Show building like that. So I'm like, yeah. where can we go? So we, we go down these steps. We end up locked out of someplace. Then, then we end up in the COVID testing center, right? Little then we shot. all finally end up back into the, the lounge area, club reparations. Yeah. But I'm sitting there and it was like one of those times where you playing hide and seek. Club what? We got a club in there called Club Reparations. Uh, so Alex seen it. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. So we're in there and I'm, it's, you know, it's one of those things where like you go to play hide and seek, but the person don't never come look for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, damn. So I'm sitting there, right? And I'm like, Yo, she texting anybody, yo? Yeah. Everybody Wi-Fi working and shit. <laughs> so I finally, I texted her, I was like, yo, you need to really come down here right now. We having a problem. Nothing. Rachel been working, she know me for 10 years. She's like, <laughs> this is not a time for you to try to be funny. <laughs> I'm really in the middle of something. So if this is serious, you need to really let me know. So I'm like, do I cash in the I'm serious card for nah, this bitch? Nah, not for this one. Nah, not this one. Not this one. Not this one. This is the setup. This is the setup. Because now when you do cash it in, it's going to be real good. Yeah, this is the jab. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So I'm telling the room like, oh, I'm not going to tell her we playing, man. I said, yo, you really think she playing? You think she's on us, right? Still don't know if she was on us or not. Yeah. I just know she didn't fall from my little hide and seek game. Yeah. You yeah, know? Yeah, but why yeah. you feel like you had to play it out? I don't know. I just for the thrill. For no reason. What's wrong with us, yeah? I don't know. Why are we playing hide and seek? <laughs> You're 40 something years old playing hide and seek, bro. Like, and this girl got nothing to do with it. She's like, for I'm not thrill. playing with y'all. For the thrill. For the Listen, thrill. I, 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 man. Was, I, was a dollar, I was with Dolly with the uh Target. And a lady asked, she was, I was like, what is that stuff, that lotion that you said you have to get? And I was like, it's Vagisil. <laughs> oh, Vagisil. You know what a Vagisil is at? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, she yeah. looking around, like the people looking around like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. it's over there. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, I like doing that shit, We almost bro. got Nyla arrested. For what? Yeah. I mean, because we was home. We was in Charleston. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Hit one of my dudes, like, yo, we gonna be at this restaurant, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Walk in here and act like, you smell weed. <laughs> 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 tell, her, tell her she's under arrest. <laughs> so we sitting in the restaurant. Oh, officer, walks call in, a cop yeah. officer walks in. Officer walks in. Officer's like, hey, um, 
I talked to y'all too for a minute. Yeah, uh, yeah. We observed you. It was me and Nala. Smoking weed. Was any of y'all smoking weed? No, no, and, no, no, and, weed? No, he, no, he said, is any one of y'all in that white truck? I smell weed coming out that white truck. And Nala was like, yeah. For no reason. Why you say yeah, Nala? <laughs> and, then, and then the cop asked me, was like, was you with her in that red white truck? I said, no, I wasn't in it. She's looking at me like, <laughs> like crazy. Man, if you <laughs> saw if you just saw the look of defeat on Nyla's face. She like, wanted to I mean, rattle just, me so bad. Like just I'm looking gone. at her like, you better shut up. I wasn't with you. <laughs> like, just go. <gone>, right? <laughs> <laughs> she held it together. She held it together, but I couldn't. So the officer's like, could you come, come with me? me? <laughs> man, if you just saw the way she got up, like, you'd have oh, thought man. she got booed at the garden, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so I lost it. If I'd have just held on for five more That's seconds it. and let, let her the put door. them handcuffs on. Oh, my. Let it go. That Fucking amazing. It's fucked up. For no reason. The moral of the story, man. Thank God they didn't get me because I probably would have pushed the cop because I was dirty. Yeah. They got tried to get the fuck out of there. Oh, you wasn't in on the joke? Hey, you ain't tell me shit. It was supposed to get me. Oh, I should have really let it ride, man. Wow. Oh, it was. I did tell him you were not. That's dangerous. Oh, no, you're right. You're that's right. dangerous. That's you're right. dangerous. You're right. Because yeah. I'm like, I didn't yo, tell him. I'm no, you're right. I did. I said, right I, said, I, said, I said, it's waxing the young lady with him. <laughs> I did say that. Yo, you're that's right. crazy. In the country, you know what I, you know what I'm saying? I'm in the country, bro. Come yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to yeah, do yeah. me like that? Yeah, that was very dumb, dude. <laughs> that, that, that was me like very that. dumb, dude. Bro, we be getting people pulled over. I know you ain't talking. Him and Potty used to pretend to be cops. Oh, wow. <laughs> they used to have on the black jackets with the shades <laughs> and the little stupid shit around their neck, the badge with hats on, hopping out on people. <laughs> what, what it was fun? good fun though. That shit was fun. <laughs> Putting people on the hood of the car, <laughs> searching. <laughs> but that's good though. <laughs> I used to pull everybody on. Shut up. Real fast. Uh, click. Shut up. Uh, Come here. Uh, <laughs> yo, them nights used to be so crazy. I remember the first time I saw y'all do that shit. I'm like, yo, what the fuck is wrong with you? I get the real drunk yo. person that's really drunk that's come out the club about the dude. I was saving lives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was saving lives because if I spook you before you get in that car and do a DUI, bro. you ain't going to do this shit. Bro, yeah. random that's Monday nights, going, bro. Yeah. I was going after the DUI guy. You were saying I'd be lives, standing yeah. in front of the spot and see these two pull up and they they would jump out <laughs> with the jackets on in the back. Hey, get up this car. You, you, and motherfuckers was doing it. <laughs> you gotta flip the badge real fast. Ah, right, get on. <laughs> I got a great technique too. Oh. How many times I got put in hand? Cause I got the greatest oh, technique in the world. Oh my ah. god, man! <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck was wrong with us, yo? Yeah, it was dumb. Oh my god, if you man! You asked me to get you out of class. Uh, never mind. Yeah, that was dumb. <laughs> no, it was so stupid. <laughs> so to stupid. be young and dumb again. Yeah, I used never to have people would stuck not in the classroom because they had doodoo on the knob. Nobody wanted to touch the knob. Yeah, the dude used to put doodoo <laughs> on the doorknob, doodoo on the railing so nobody, and shit. Everybody was stuck in the classroom. But talking about nobody then, could get out. But then hit the fire alarm. <laughs> <laughs> So people were rushing out of the class. They gotta grab the door. Got <laughs> they gotta grab the rails. <laughs> dude, it was great. I mean, it, it did have fun times. That was oh either, that was some God, dumb shit to man. do. Yeah, but it was funny. Yeah. You got to let people grow, bro. But yeah. do we ever really? No. I don't think we do. I think you evolve. I don't want to grow. If I could lock somebody in the house, in the room right now with a dude at the doorknob and nobody, they could only open from the inside, I might do it right now. <laughs> I got to stop it, man. I, I got to do stuff like that to my kids, man. And you don't realize you might be traumatizing them. Oh, yo. yeah. No, prank your kids. I bro, think that's yo, good. Oh, my God. Yo, I had this Sting mask over the uh, the pandemic. You know <laughs> yeah. Sting the wrestler? Yeah, the, the OG Sting with the yeah, white, yeah, yeah, the yeah, white yeah, face yeah. paint. Yeah, yeah. And I got my whole family. I was like, I know what time is nighttime, right? I know what yeah, time is yeah. time for bed, right? Do you know? What time is nighttime? <laughs> <laughs> I Here think we I go. Know. <laughs> hey, I'm different than most people. I know when it's nighttime, bro. Like, I, I know what time know, is nighttime. Right? I, I know when it's dark. I know when it's time to go to bed. <laughs> I know bedtime. Oh, I know that time. I know God. bedtime. <laughs> so, so, so listen. I'm smart. <laughs> <laughs> it's dark outside at nighttime. <laughs> <laughs> it's like outside it's daytime. <laughs> oh my god! Well, listen, I went somebody right now. Stop it! I went upstairs first, right? Act like I'm in the bathroom. I put this thing mask on. I sit in the yoga position in the middle of my two youngest children's room. 
right? Yeah. Lights off and everything. Come on. So man. my wife, <laughs> the youngest, <laughs> and my second youngest all come in the room at the same time. Uh -huh. And it was like a half a delayed reaction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And ah! And everybody <laughs> ran out. And my youngest was the last one. No. <laughs> it's fucked up. No. And she just re she was the last one. She was like, ah! <laughs> Man, I had to do so much consoling that night with yeah. the joy that bought me. Yeah. <laughs> The joy. <laughs> what they say when you took it off? It was just like they was like, "What the fuck?" But my wife was like, "What's wrong with you, yo?" Yeah. Like yeah. my wife, she with me. She know how I get down. Yeah. yeah, yeah the kids yeah. like, "What the? What is your problem? Yeah, yeah, Throw yeah. that away. Yeah. Get rid of that mask." Now you, for how long you can't sleep at night and all that, seeing that shit, man. Oh Damn. my god. No, I think you got to. I never, I never, I never was scared of the boogeyman. I always had the rat. The rat. That's like, what a mouse of. or something that ran past. Yeah. I was getting no boogeyman. Fucking boogeyman. I'm down to be his ass. I'm scared of that fucking rat. No, yeah. I was always scared of boogeyman and shit. I was always scared of the supernatural. Not scared of it, but I just knew that the supernatural existed. I didn't yeah. know what it was when I was younger. Now as I'm old, I embrace it. Yeah. Like, Why is it called supernatural? I have no idea. Yeah. Um, superpowers. Ah. Uh. Exactly. Huh. Say so she just explained something to you with Taylor just you explained something to you with so much confidence, but then said, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you yeah. had so much confidence when you explained. I thought it. she died before you just seen it. Hush you... before I drive a car through your part. Listen, let's <laughs> um let's pay some bills and come back and do some shit you won't care about next let's week. Let's do it. All right, let's take a break for a second, man, and talk about keeps. Salute to keeps. Keeps is a sponsor of the Brilliant Idiots podcast this week. We really appreciate y'all. Uh, two out of three men will experience some form of hair loss by the time they're 35. And there are only two FDA approved medications that can prevent hair loss. All right. Keeps offers both. All right. Keeps offers a simple, stress free way to keep your hair convenient virtual doctor consultations and medications delivered straight to your door every three months. You don't even have to leave your crib, all right? Low cost treatments start at just $10 per month and Keeps offers generic versions. Discreet packaging and proven results. Keeps has more five-star reviews than any of its competitors. Prevention is key. Treatments can take four to six months to see results, so act fast, all right? Now, if I had Keeps when I was younger, I probably could have kept my hairline. I don't know if it can restore my hairline, but I just know that if I had keeps when I was younger, I probably never would have lost it. Maybe so, though, because my you know cousin used to be practicing on my hair and he just used to be trying to get that line right so much that he just had it leaning back. But if you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to K-E-E-P-S dot com slash idiots to receive your first month of treatment for free. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash idiots to get your first month free. K-E-E-P-S dot com slash idiots. Today's episode of Brilliant Idiots is also brought to you by Upstart. Are you carrying a credit card balance month after month? You're not the only one. High interest rates make it hard to pay off your debt, but Upstart can help. Join the thousands of happy borrowers who made that final payment. Upstart is the fast and easy way to pay off your debt with a personal loan all online. Whether it's paying off credit cards, consolidating high interest debt, or funding personal expenses, over half a million people have used Upstart to get a simple fixed monthly payment. Unlike other lenders, Upstart looks at more than just your credit score, like your income and employment history. This means they can offer smarter rates with trusted partners. With a five-minute online rate check, you can see your rate up front for loans between $1,000 to $50,000. You can receive funds as fast as one business day after accepting your loan. Find out how Upstart can lower your monthly payments today when you go to upstart.com slash idiots. That's upstart.com slash idiots. Don't forget to use our URL to let them know we sent you. Loan amounts will be determined based on your credit income and certain other information provided in your loan application. Go to upstart.com slash idiots. Now let's get back to the show. All right, shit you won't care about next week. What did we miss over the past couple of weeks? What we got there? Uh, Boosie mad at me. Uh, Boosie wasn't really mad at me. What um, was that Boosie video? Because it looked like they were filming that. It didn't look like it was... Nah, there was a boom mic. I thought it was a sketch. I thought it was a... Yeah. Man, I thought it was a movie. Probably shooting a movie. There was a boom mic. It was literally holding a mic oh, like that. Okay. So they I were trying know. to capture the audio. Uh, What else we got? It was, oh, click on that one. Study claims affairs improve marriages. I'm going to tell you why. This is a great conversation. Um, we had last week on uh, The God's Honest Truth, we had Shan Boudram. You ever heard of Shan Boudram? She is a relationship expert. I watched expert. the clip. Yeah. She's, she's in a, a lot uh, of games. Polygamous relationship. She's, no, she's in a, no, a non-monogamous marriage is what they call oh, it. Non-monogamous marriage. Bro. My bad. Yes. So she could cheat. They both can cheat, but yeah. they're married. No, not cheating. Because it's not cheating. 
Right. If you it's, know it's not cheating. Yeah, they both can cheating. have other partners. I, yeah. yeah. I, mean, I hope I'm explaining that right. So this, yeah. this, this U.S. Sun article is crazy. Flings can only get better. Over 75% of cheech claim affairs actually improve marriage. the sun is like the, this is a, um, what are they called? The daily, what is the other one? This like bullshit? The Daily Mail? No, no, what? no, 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 no. The no, National yeah. Enquirer. Fox yeah, News. like the tablets. What do we think about that though? Just off headlines, not reading the article. Um, do you think cheats, you think affairs actually improve marriages? Mm. No. I mean, if you cheat on me, it's over. Yeah, period. Done. Period. If you look at Leonardo DiCaprio the way that Jeff Bezos' wife looked at Leonardo DiCaprio, I don't know if we're coming back from that either. Yeah. Though. By the I way, I don't shit. know if we're coming no back shit. from that one, bro. What that show no. you though? Um, I'm that, you know what showed me hmm. is um, money this ain't is, shit. No, nah, it's not money ain't shit. <laughs> this is what I think a lot of people aren't realizing. <clears throat> you don't think that girl thinks she could get Leonardo DiCaprio? Yeah, girl. She got the richest anything. man in history and the richest man in the world to leave his wife, give half of his riches up for her. Yeah, that she, girl she thinks she, she could fire. accomplish anything. She got the super fire. Like a little bit of you got to be like, what does she have? Ain't no way in hell I'm paying fifty billion dollars for some pussy. He did. Wow. And depending how Leonardo DiCaprio's ego is set up, he gonna smash just because it's Jeff Peso's just wife. Just boom! I'm a, I'm, I smash Peso's boom boom. Mm. Look at look at her. Look at her. And is he on a step or something? That's crazy. Did he like, hit her with the no no? Yeah. Easy, easy, easy. By the yeah, way, we yeah. don't know what kind of relationship that her and Jeff got. You know what I'm saying? Jeff might uh, be paying for her. Like, he might be, what's I'm that sure thing that they called? Compression? Non-monogamous relationship. No, it's another one where yeah. you like to see your wife, or you like to see a significant other get smashed by another oh, dude. Cuck -hold. Oh, cuckold. Cuckolding, yeah. You yeah. never know. I mean, you know, man, listen, these people be in all types of shit, man, that we don't yeah. know nothing about. You got all that money. Come on. All I'm saying is like, you know, this girl, do not sleep on this girl. This she girl knows what she accomplished. Crazy, Let me see. Say Come on. Fam, 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 fam. You crazy right If now. we go to the grocery store and Carla do that to the fucking grocery store guy at the line, I'd be pissed yeah. the fuck off. She do like she's saying something wild. Like, are you really a wolf? <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, can I get I mean? on the movie with like, you. And she look like she looked like she's saying something Yo, crazy. He not even listening. Why did he hit her with the, the, Kimbe, the Kimbe Matumbo finger wag? Look at though. this. Look at this. Jeff's still talking to him. He's just walking away. Nah, disrespect. Well, because I'm Leonardo Richest DiCaprio. Richest man in the motherfucking world. Because money yo. don't matter. Yeah. I'm Leonardo DiCaprio. You're Jeff Bezos. But a woman got to understand if you could disrespect the man, a man going to disrespect the man. Leo's like, until you, you give me 100 million for climate change, bro, like you just gave Van Jones that 100 million, don't talk to me, all right? Man, he put 2 billion up for climate change. He did? Yeah. Did he give it to Leo, though? Nah, probably you not. You know Leo the man. Nah, I get what you, I get, you I get really this. You think Leo give a fuck about the climate, like dog? Yeah. Come on, fam. Nah, he cares. That's that Hollywood shit. Nah, he cares. Like, the guy flies a private plane around the world. It's electric, yeah. though. But what fuels the private plane? Stop. Yeah. It's electric. <laughs> He's got electric plane. It's electric. Stop Stop boogie, boogie, it. boogie. We nah. don't know what fuels nah. the private plane. Nah. That's just the right cause because both parties can support it. Leo needs a cause that he can support because he got all the money in the world. He got all the bitches in the world. So he needs a cause to make him look like a good dude. And he needs a uh, cause that's not going to piss off both sides. I'll tell and the you environment what, is good. I'll tell you what, it don't matter if you're in the climate change or not, the earth going to correct itself, buddy. Yeah, you think? A hundred percent. Really? Uh, earth was looking at us like, <laughs> they really yeah, think they, not doing they really think they got some time left. Yeah. Huh? Like, you, yo, you got to, I'm telling you, man, when you and your girl are around each other, watch dinosaurs, bro. Okay. Remember the old show Dinosaurs that I'm used to baby. come on TJF? I'm the yeah. baby. Yeah. Go back and watch Dinosaurs, man. That shit was one of the most that's that show had so much socially redeeming value. Yeah. And the whole show was all about climate change. That's how they that's yeah. how it, they went extinct. Yeah. Climate change. Yes. The fucking the boss of the factory that the daddy dinosaur was working at wanted to shoot some chemical in the air to like mm to take the sun out or some shit like that. Yeah. And so the daddy helped with it. But did that ended up fucking up the environment and causing climate change and it caused the ice age. Oh, right. And, like the ending scene of that show is one of the saddest scenes in the world, bro. Yeah, yeah. Like when yeah. The, the, the baby was like, oh, we going to, daddy, are we going to be okay? As the world is freezing, yeah, yeah we're going to be okay. And that's how it ends. Hey. Watch dinosaurs, bro. Climate change is real. The this, this was ill too. too. Yeah, this was Bezos' comeback. Jeff Bezos warns Leonardo DiCaprio after video of his girlfriend goes viral. Danger, steep cliff, fatal drop. Yo, Leo, come over here for a second. I love it. Yeah. I love it. You, you think it's a joke? 
It's funny yeah. when Leo does it. Nah, it's a joke. You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> shit. If it was a joke, we would never know because he got enough money to cover it all up. Yeah. <laughs> right? yeah. Every yeah. single goddamn thing. But no, for real money, I mean, that, that, that I don't know if cheating improves marriages or not, no. but I do know that my ego is way too fragile to be cockholding. What's it called? Cuckold. Cuckholding. Yeah. Compersion. No, I'm monogamous. I ain't got time you for got, that. You could do it with somebody you're not in love with. You know what, what I'm saying? That's just your girl. You go ahead yeah. and see her get fucked by somebody you smash her too. Because... I don't want to watch that. I don't want to watch someone fuck my girl. <laughs> They're not mine. That's what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, but if, yeah. if you say a girl, a girl I'm dating, I don't want to watch that. Uh, if I'm dating you, uh, or if it's just to, you never shared girl. girls before? You never had sex with a girl who had a man? Like you shared girls for years, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah. So why do you care? She's just another girl that you share. Yeah, but it's cuckold is you're just sitting there watching it, not like sharing it. Cuckold is you're just sitting there watching, jerking off as some guy fucks your <laughs> girl. Real talk. That's how I went. No, no, you said I, I went. Yeah. Nah. You were the perfect person to cock somebody. No, nah, that's. I you mean, were what they imagined. That's how I was at hedonism. We went to hedonism a couple times. Yeah. Every yeah. single time we went, it was all of these older white people propositioning. Yeah. $2,000. Yep. $2,000. Black too. dude, dreadlocks, big. Yeah. Fuck my wife. How much you got that weekend? <laughs> <laughs> I got that got stolen. <laughs> what else we got, man? Yo, Will what's up with this Will Smith Jada <laughs> shit? I hate like, it. What's going on with all this? Show? I hate it, man. What do you mean? I don't know, man. Don't like, do man uh, like that. He's he too dope for you to sit there yeah, and play like, Will out dude, like that, man. Will Smith is like, uh, so sad. He's I really kind of falling all. apart. I thought Will, Will was doing Jada a favor this whole time. Like, I was like, I guess he really loves her. Like, that's why he wanted to be. because he could be with the 90s, bro. But he could be with whoever he wants. That's Will Smith. Yeah, and yeah now but Jada's coming still out. Jada, though. Don't act like Jada's not Jada. he still deserves to have no, his own, No, that's what I'm saying. Man. Jada's Jada. He deserves to have his own. Will Smith's supposed to have his own everything. Yeah. He's not supposed to share nothing. I think that the problem with this situation is that we've looked at <clears throat> Will Smith and Jada um, a certain way for so long. Yes. So when you find out that these people are just human beings who oh go through God. regular like human being church. shit like the rest of us, right. where everybody's like, oh my God, not Will and Jada. Yeah. The past like, smoking cigarettes on the side of the church hurt your feelings. They're human. Nah, I, think it's, yeah. I think it's a lot of us look at Jada as lucky to be with Will. So when we see Jada talking crazy, <laughs> I'm just saying, like, listen. I've never looked at it like that. I've always called myself a Pinkett Smith Winfrey Knowles Carter. I've always looked at Jada Pinkett as a Jada Pinkett. Like she, Jada is no joke. Yeah, Jada, bro. Jada dope and thug. Yeah, I mean, I maybe it's a white like, thing, but like Jada know, just have his own, didn't really penetrate white culture that much. So we're looking at Will Smith, who's like at one point in time the biggest celebrity in the world in terms of like movie stars, action stars, and then he's with this girl who's like kind of was in one of the Matrixes or something like. Yeah, but before that, to us, man, Jada Pinkett Smith is culture. You know what I mean? Because Jada Pinkett Smith was on Set It Off. Different World. She was in Set It Off. You yeah, know what not I mean? Really, not really Loved tapping her. into the. And just beautiful. Like, damn. Like, Jada was just always one of them ones you looked at when you was young. Like, Listen, ooh. I'm sure she's great and I'm sure it's awesome. It looked see, like it saying. looked like Will was really in love with this girl and then it wasn't any, any clout shit because Who he could get somebody not, way bigger. The think, point I'm trying to make is own. well. The point I'm trying to make is I think at least in like white culture we thought that Will could do wh whoever he wanted. He could get whatever the fuck he wanted. And now it looks like this girl who we thought he was doing her a favor is shitting all over him and she not happy with relationship. But you know what though? I, she's I, cheating on him. I, he can't satisfy her. It's like yo, how much shit you got to disclose? But here's the Stop thing: Stop disclosing though. everything. Here's the thing: you know, if we just keeping it one hundred, it's like yo, Jada didn't really say anything bad was it, was when she it? did the interview with Gwyneth Paltrow. I think that's who it was with. Uh, People no. really took that out of context because all she said was like, yo, thinking that you can read your partner's mind is one of the biggest pitfalls that you're going to have in a relationship. That's a fact. Yes, no, is. I think she said like, thinking that you're going to be happy together, thinking you're going to be like satisfied sexually your whole life. Or no, something. She, but, but no, but she, but she, she said, but no, stop she didn't speaking say, facts, say you sure? Yeah, you sure she didn't say Stop that. speaking facts, oh, how, bro. She didn't say it like that. Let's, say, Damn. Let's hear it. Alex, because you know I'm a Pinkett Smith Winfrey Knowles Carter, so I lean oh. bias. Yeah, Taylor got the. I don't know what this is, but my point is like Jada. They took it out of context because everybody's looking for something now. Yeah, like ever since the entanglement situation. Yeah, you know what I mean. That. Everybody's Stop taking it out of context. Stop getting entangled, yo. But yo, yeah, we don't. But here's the thing. We, we, I, that's why I can't wait to read Will's book. Uh, it comes out this week. I actually ordered it already. I hope I hope I get it this week. But we don't know what kind of relationship they got. You're That's really up it. the brand. They don't care about the brand no more. Can I tell you something? And they shouldn't. Can I tell you something? And a lot of men don't get credit for this, but like there's famous men out there, like famous, famous. 
that their wives have cheated on them and they chose not to share that information, keep it tucked to protect the wife and the kids. And the kids. That's and what then, it's about. That's what I said. And then they get caught cheating later or something else happens later after they're broken up and it looks like some cheating shit. And then that comes out and they still don't say, yo, the reason why we're broken up is the wife. Big difference. Will and Jada kids can't never grown. do the right. Don't ever do dirt on the wife because the kids. But Will and Jada kids. I can't kids believe you thought Jada's as big a fucking superstar as Will Smith. No, but they're not even they, close. No, 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 no. But when they started in the '90s, like Jada was no joke. So put it like this: not even close. No, put it We're like talking this. Talking about Will Smith here. No, like, but in the '90s, they I think they was together before even like he did Six Degrees of Separation, which was his first movie. But even still, the TV show was big. But Fresh Prince was a big sitcom show. But Jada yeah. was on a big sitcom show too. Not as big as the Fresh was Prince. Big, bro. It might not have. I don't know if it was big as Fresh and, Prince. No and Jada's not the star it's of a different world. Right but she was on there enough that like. She, we looked at her as a star. You're she talking about Dwayne the Wayne. star of the show versus a co-star on a less popular show. But the difference between Different World and other shows, like, yes, you had Kadeem Hardison and Whitley, uh, Jasmine Guy, who were, like, the centerpieces uh -huh. of it. But it was a show based on a college campus, so everybody almost kind of had equal yeah, billing. I and Jada part. was the person who would come on screen and steal the show, bro. Mm. Like, her, you know, she just would. And, like, her, her, her interactions with Tupac on the show, like, that was... Big to me growing up that's culturally. The, that's the too big of a part. That's the problem. To right me? There. Right. I'm like, that's pop. And you think that, that that's as big as Will Smith, superstar Will Smith. Well, put it like this. <laughs> this this should shut the argument down. Will wanted her and married her. Yeah, but we be doing yeah. that all the fucking time. No. Will wanted her and married her. Out of all of the women in Hollywood. Yes. And everything that was going on, Will saw Jada and said, that's who I want to be with. That's for what the I'm rest saying, because life. he really loved her. Yes, she was, it, yo, Jada bad. Yo, so Jada so he saved her. No, I'm no, going to say he no. saved he her, but she's not her, supposed bro. to be doing no. nothing with nobody else. He though. saved Jesus. her. Uh, they were, to, me, to me, Will and Jada were equal. You're villain. crazy. To me? You're crazy. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That Will and that Jada love, baby. Yeah, yeah, That the was like, that was like hope and bull Brady. Dope. You think equal you. villain? Like, this guy was making $20 million a film. Jada never made $20 million in her life for one project. Yeah, it wasn't about money. We're talking about the size of an actor. It was about culture. No, no, no. I'm talking about culture. To me, Will and Jada have always made sense. No, no. I'm not saying... Yeah, they uh, make really. sense, wow. yeah. but, you know. Yeah, especially in that time. So you telling me, you trying to say Will and Jada is like Beyonce and Jay-Z. I put them more of yeah, the... Yeah, Beyonce and Jay, I that, that makes that sense. more than Will and Will Jada. And, Jada. Is and I, ain't, I ain't taking nothing away from Jada. I'm just yes. saying Will is just Will. I think he should have his own First everything. Of all, go, go, look, when did they, all right, they've been married since 97. Also, so you weren't even old enough to watch A Different World. No, you weren't. No, you weren't. Nah. What are you talking about? You, you, you couldn't weren't. enjoy it. You talking you about? Ain't enjoy you don't even it. know the show. You ain't enjoy it. You don't it. even know her character. What's her character's name on the show? Exactly. Khadija. No, it wasn't. Shut up. <laughs> 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 Listen, when did Will and Jada meet? This is a great conversation because they married in '97. So Google when they met because we got because because you have to look at when they met. You know what I mean? Because Will became. <laughs> Now see that you just talking out of turn. You don't know if that's true. They, they said it. You, you don't know. I've if that's never true. heard that before. You they, don't know. They if that's met true. in '94 when uh, 19, Jada was 19. They met in '94. When did? Oh, I don't know. She said it on Who oh, she said be saying that? a lot. She says too much. Google, 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 she Google. Will Smith. Much. Google Will Smith left Can his we wife for Jada. She says too much. I don't think so. I, hey, she's got a fucking platform called Red Table Talk. Shut it down, yo. No, that, talk about some recipes. <laughs> Let's see. We're gonna see yo, bro, right now. I, when I say it, they yell at me. Did yeah, say, yo, the woman, you got kids. We all talk kids. too much. We got microphones I, I in our get face. It, but yo, you want the but kids? The mom was like saying, total lost bro. the car. The dad is just see. did have Will a crash. Smith leave his wife for Jada? Let's see. Yeah, kids involved. Nobody wanted to know that mom was being nasty with somebody else. How long does it take to type that in? I don't care how much money you got. Hey, sorry, Google sorry, it, I Taylor. Two kids. Will Smith tells wife Jada Pinkett Smith that his divorce from Sherry Zampino was his ultimate failure. Scroll down. Will Smith is reflecting on his past relationship and what it's like being These a father of three. Reflecting, Doing a special Father Day edition of Red Table Talk. The actor got emotional while talking about his first marriage to Cherie Zampino. The two were married from 92 to 95 and shared one child, 27-year-old wife, Trey Will, later married Jada in 1997. They have two kids together. Divorce was the worst thing in my adult life. Divorce was the ultimate failure for me. I've been hurt a lot in my adult life, but I don't think anything touches the failure of getting divorced from my then two-year-old son's mother. If a man's not a great husband, then he's then he loses his parental rights, and I'm a way better father than I am husband. 
Show me, Taylor. Show me what Jada said that uh, Will left. Um, you made that shit her. up like you He's made up. You watched the living. She says what was the show about? Show me. Just go to the red table. Where did she say it? Taylor say now, now Taylor now you gotta get on the microphone. Come on, get on the mic. Right there. I want you to I want you to you own it? this. Come on, Taylor. I am do own it, bro. Go to the red table talk. Now you don't feel like talking about it. And she don't feel like talking about the lie she started. No, it's not. I don't really remember watching. No, you don't. On no, the you red don't. table talk. Go to the red table talk. You, you don't up. remember that. You made it up. You made it up. <laughs> Why can't people just admit when they're wrong? Yeah. I'm not being wrong because I know when I saw it. So no, you did not. So then see can that. we see it? So if you saw it, show us. Because I would think that would be headline news everywhere. You wouldn't have to search for that one. Okay, so anybody out there, all our great researchers on Reddit, if yeah. we're wrong, we can come in here next week and admit that they're wrong. Listen. Show us where Jada Pinkett Smith said that Will Smith... Who said it? I'm just saying they talked about it. Who talked about he it? he was with his wife, who met Jada on the set. No, I what? was on. And then that's it. What are you saying exactly now? She says she didn't say it. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> she said somebody was talking about Yo. I don't know what she's talking about. Yo. Hey, there's a mic right oh, there. Oh, man. It's, you could just sit down and be silent. Oh, Fetty Wap got arrested. Oh, Ouch. yeah. During Ouch. this Ouch. whole process. That's that it. was wild. You know That's what's wild. fucked up about that? Talk to me. That's on his boys. Nah. Nah. I, I, let me just, let me say it. Maybe I don't know the whole situation. Break it down. But it's just like, he makes all this money. He's removed himself from all the drug dealing, whatever. But now he's yeah. still using the money to fund the drug dealing enterprise, right? Shit went to weed. Sure, sure. There's a lot of shoulda, coulda. So what I'm just trying to say is like, he don't need to do this. He doesn't need to sell drugs. You don't know. Let's assume he doesn't need to sell drugs. Um, His friends. I can't assume that. Cause my, cause I get what you're saying. Just fucking okay, go say ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yes, go Jesus ahead. fucking Hot Christ. Takes. Let's go. Go ahead. Let me see. Okay, you. you're a celebrity. Bless. There's basketball players who do this. They don't need to, but they grew up with the gang. They were raised Who's with the, the gang. That do this? I don't want to snitch, but it's pretty well known. But they grew up with the gang. They got arrested for having a lot of. Oh, but yeah, I mean, they didn't make NBA yeah, money though, did they? they no, make... no, 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 big, 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 big. So. They, they grew up in the gang. They're with the gang, et cetera. They go make the basketball money, but the gang's like, yo, don't forget about us. So they throw the gang money to run the drug dealing enterprise, make sure that they could go get these packs, make sure that they could go ship that shit around using that big money. They don't put enough of a smoke screen in between the big money and how they purchase the stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay? If the guys are snitching on the person with the money, you're double fucked up because one, you're supposed to be the person that doesn't snitch and two, he don't need you. He could have gone and lived his happy life that was outside legit. Y'all out. But he said, I'm not going to forget about y'all. If this is how y'all want to hustle, this is what you want to do. The wave is not that. Now, if it's not that, he needed to do this so he could support his Listen, lifestyle. That's I think, what I think. No, yeah, yeah. But certain things. I take B. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you understand things, what I'm saying. I get it. Like, you're not wrong, but I take B in this situation. But, but still, but why he, is he his, why his guy snitching on him anyway? Uh, he snitching on him? That's, that's just part of the He's thing. not snitching on him. He's not going, hi, I'm doing drugs. No, no I thought it was a federal not, investigation. That's what I'm saying. So certain things you actually knock on the cop's door, fentanyl, cocaine, certain type of dope. Certain things knocks on the cop's door. He should have went to the weed game. He had enough money to get into the weed game and, and, and make a lot of bread. Why even get into the weed game illegally in 2021? <laughs> it makes Wax no can sense. do it? Like, yeah. what the fuck? You're not in the weed game illegally. Dude. That's what I'm saying. Wax again illegally. Oh, that's what I mean. Like, yeah, like yeah, get yeah, yeah. married. Like, if y'all sell out this motherfucker cheating, retarded. Yeah. If I stop cheating, it's corny. What I'm yeah. saying? I don't Before, know what's I'm going just saying, on. back in the day, I used to cheat. I, but if I'm I stop so cheating, yeah, 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 that's yeah, what I'm saying. Yeah. If I stop cheating, yeah, that yeah. means anybody can stop cheating. I understood cheating. exactly what you were saying. Taylor's just trying to save face from the Will and Jada mm. comments. Right. Don't like it on that. Fight us for what? Because you had some wrong information. You said something that oh, was inaccurate. Little, little bomb. I've never seen her talk about her. Can you talk on the mic? Because right now nobody at I've home never can in it. my life seen Jada Pinkett Smith say that. But we're Will doing this his... for people at home. Yes. Jada, in, this is what Taylor said. Taylor said that Don't Jada. Don't you want to produce no, the no, no. podcast? Said Taylor Jada. said that Jada and, and I mean, <laughs> Will and his ex-wife got a divorce because of Jada Pinkett Smith. That was her original statement. No, she said she, she said, said that it. they talked. She said Jada said that. Yes. I can't, I need to. It, 
So, so who who's said oh, it? No, 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 this so is good. <laughs> this is good. J- Taylor said she did. Taylor said she never said Jada said it. She just said it was on Red Table Talk. Charlemagne never said it. It was on Breakfast Club. So who said it? Andrew Schultz never said it, but it was on Flagrant Two. Who said it? So who said who it? Said it. If it wasn't Jada saying it, <laughs> was it Grams? Was it Willow? <laughs> Oh, it's no, you got you. your own story. <laughs> I, I, I'm so confused. Flabbergasted. Right yeah, I really am flabbergasted. <laughs> Ready? Can we have some homework this weekend? I just yeah. want to know. I, maybe I I really want to know because as a Pinkett Smith Winfrey knows Carter, I have to have facts about my people. So I need to know if Jada left Will. Be, I mean, Will left his ex-wife because of Jada. That's what Taylor said. No, Jada said it. Jada said Taylor said that. No, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> see, how, see how this shit goes? The, the, Jada the, said, Jada the thing said, that's bothering me is that you're not willing to admit that you might be wrong. No, I remember hearing it, but y'all got it. Y'all right. I know we right. So it doesn't matter. Now, when you Googled it and couldn't find it, was there a little <laughs> bit of concern? Like, if, at any point in time in the Google, at, at any point in time in the Google, were you like, maybe I misheard something at all? <laughs> You didn't even you look did it up? You did look for it first. Wait, hold on, hold on. You Googled it. I know. <laughs> and we watched you. Are you saying? Oh, you told me to Google that. When I went to look at the stuff, you didn't want me to, so it doesn't matter. But, it, okay. but, but we did Google it together, right? We did Google it together, right? Taylor is the Kanye West of producers. Oh, so this is entertaining. It's entertaining. That's, entertaining. Only, that's the only reason we're on it. It's entertaining. Yes. We know it's inconsistent, but it's just entertaining. This is, this is really entertaining. <laughs> What happened right there, yo? Jada said it, so you gotta listen. <laughs> That's hey, gonna be the name hey, of the podcast. Y'all wanna know some, you wanna know some real shit? <laughs> what? It's true. I, I googled no, it. And not. I found it. No, it's not. No, you no, didn't. You're lying. Need, I, just it need to be. No, it's not. Guy. Look, it's not true. Let me look, see. Look, is it red see. table talk? Let me see. Let me see. Nah, I'm just I know you're lying. Oh, <laughs> it's just have to be that guy. Jesus Christ! <laughs> Look, it's more entertainment. It's all entertainment, right. dog. <laughs> but uh, we just lie for entertainment. Hold your head, Fetty. <laughs> That's all this shit is nowadays. Yeah, everybody yeah. lying for fucking entertainment, just man. What's lie, the point of being bro. consistent? Who gives a fuck? Who gives a fuck? Nobody cares about the truth and the yeah, lies. Even when he's young, you know what I'm saying. Nobody got no pussy. Like yo, you ain't get no pussy before. Yeah, That's what I did. Mm. It's a lie. We all started young. Did you ever lie about getting pussy? I, I couldn't. I couldn't. I'm yeah. not, I was really getting pussy. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, you I mean, was getting molested. I guess so. We all were at a young age. Not me. You never got molested? I never got molested. Ah. Yeah. Uh, pretty, uh, pretty good. Let's do some Asking Idiots, man. Okay. Let's do some Asking Idiots and get up oh, out of here. Oh, shit. We need Taylor for Asking Idiots. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll pee real quick, and then I'll come back. We do some Asking Idiots. Like okay, yeah. Okay, let's tie this all up. Yes. I think we found it, bro. I think we found it. Okay. I think Taylor Gate. Okay, yeah, this she, is... She, she found it. No... No, this is it. This is it. And, okay. it, and, and it ties it all in about even what I was saying with Different World. Okay. This is a timeline of yeah. Will Smith and Jada's relationship. 1995, the Smith started dating. Mm-hmm. During a 2018 Red Table Talk appearance, Smith expressed that he was attracted to Pinkett Smith when he later saw her on the college-themed TV series A Different World. Now, mind you, him and his wife was having problems at this time. Mm. I knew there was something in our energy that would be magic, he said. Unfortunately... Smith was married at the time to Fletcher and decided not to act on his attraction to Pinkett Smith. Smith later revealed on Red Table Talk that he knew Pinkett Smith was the one, an aha moment he had in a restaurant bathroom while he was on a dinner date with Fletcher. I had a realization I wasn't with the person I was supposed to be with, Smith said. I was sitting in a stall and I was crying and laughing uncontrollably. And I knew Jada was the woman I was supposed to be with, but I was never getting divorced. I went back out, sat down with Cherie and started going back on with my life. It wasn't until Fletcher ended things with Will that he tried to that he tried to woo the actress. He asked Pinkett Smith if she was seeing anyone and her response was no. Cool. You're seeing me now. Smith smoothly told her. From there, Pinkett Smith moved from Baltimore to California and the two began dating. Smith and his ex-wife officially divorced in late 1995. And then in 1997, Jada and Will got married. Mm. Okay. So. He had the hots for her. He liked her, but he wasn't cheating on her. Is that fair he to did, say? He did. Okay. Well, how I say it? He wasn't like he was cheating. I'm just saying he had children. That's not what you said. No, we're not letting her get out with that one. No, keep her in the figure four. That is not what she said, Andrew. No, but then I said, but he had, like, he liked you. Like, you know, that's not what you feelings. said, Taylor. I didn't say that's what I'm saying right now. That's, oh, that, okay. That, that cannot so be So you can admit you good. was wrong the first time. You lied on my cousins. You li- 
As a Pinkett Smith Winfrey Nose Carter. It was wrong. So. No, 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 no. Not how you worded it was wrong. You were just wrong. He wanted okay. to be there probably, though. <laughs> probably. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. <laughs> Lord Jesus, help me. <laughs> Lord Jesus, help me. Help me, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Lord Jesus. Hey, can call, we say a prayer? Jesus. I think we need to say a prayer all of us Jesus. together. Jesus. Jesus. Let's say a prayer. Jesus. Jesus. I think we need to say a prayer. Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> can, can, Jesus. can we please Jesus say a like, prayer? Jesus, like, I'm busy, man. It's about to be yeah, Christmas. Yeah, Leave me alone. Right? 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 I got time for this, all right? <laughs> Listen, bro. Can we need, I think we need to say a prayer. Can someone lead us in a prayer? <laughs> now I lay me down to sleep. I pray Jada Pink get my soul to keep. If Amen. I should die before I wake, I pray Will Smith my soul to take. Amen. Done. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. In Jesus' name. Amen. You ready? Let's do some yes. masking idiots. Let's do it. Alex. Paulito Sway 87 says, when life gets chaotic, what's the one thing that grounds you that you tend to overlook? Ooh, this is a good one. Shit. What do you think? As Peter Baelish said, chaos is a ladder. I like chaos. Chaos is a time where you get to come up. It all depends on where they're coming from. Yeah, I think does it. Yeah, I guess you're saying if there's chaos in like your personal life, that might be tricky. But like chaos, chaos is a ladder, my friends. Chaos will take you to the top. Chaos offers moments for you chaos to step your game up. Sheesh. You know, so mm -hmm. if everything's too comfy, shit is whack. Like I don't. Right now, I think everything's too comfy. You know what I mean? Like but chaos you know I mean? is different than like. Trouble. So or... Pandemic was chaos, and we were popping. Not to me. Nah, I don't think. Say what? I don't think that was chaos. Not to me. Man, I'm looking For at a chaos lot of people. Like, it was chaos. No, I get it. I get it. I yeah, thought it yeah. was peaceful. I enjoyed it. Well, the, exactly. The way my anxiety set up, not having to leave the house every day, yeah. knowing where all the family at yeah, in the house, yeah, yeah, yeah. like chaos is everything out of control. I think most bro. people didn't have the same opportunity. That's or, right. Or, or privilege, if you will, mm -hmm. as you had. But it provided a situation where you know we obviously. We were doing the Turn Your Phones. We did the Netflix special. Like, and then when we came out of that and started touring, like it gave yeah, a lot of opportunities. chaos, bro. Say what? Chaos is like, yeah, life is turned upside down. And that's literally what happened during the pandemic. Where turn the fuck were you? Side. Turn your phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You that's... don't think that people's life got turned upside down in the pandemic? They lost their jobs. To, There's no the way better, they couldn't leave their house. A lot of people for the better. Stop I mean, it, I mean just, people, a lot of people, talking. what are you talking How about? How many people, fucking people died? People died. Like, what are you talking about? People committing suicide. Why are you just talking to talk? No. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you, you, you forgot you what happened like last year. No, but you put like this: if you like ask fifty percent of people, they're like, "Oh, they're kind of great," and then another fifty percent, yeah, people died in their life. And stuff nah, like that. I think it's probably but more like eighty twenty. Son, people's mental health was fucked up. They were yes, locked man. inside, couldn't be around people. People lost their jobs. Yeah. People, that, people that went back to they're work and realized I don't even want to work here no That's more. That's what I'm saying. They was happy as hell. They like, yo, I they weren't happy. No, they just got adjusted to something new. You met they like did. two people like that. Majority yeah, of people was no fucked way, up, bro. Man. You yeah, see, bro. The way you see the comments, they tell you, oh, no, I, I, shit was great for me. Yeah, but, but those comments probably represent the 5% to 10% of people. Yeah. Yo, the world, the world, not just America, the world was yes. fucked up last year. But you it know was, what? They are able to write, so that means they're alive. There was chaos, bro. Yeah. But what I'm saying is chaos provides opportunity at times. So when I see things that are in disarray, when I see things that are fucked up, when I see people looking for answers and those types of things, I'm like, oh, it's time to shine. Let's go. When everybody's calm, cool, collected, chilling, like you ever go to like a beach resort and shit like that? Like yeah. ain't no point in making content in a beach resort. No point in fucking doing happen. podcasts and shit like that. Like you're at a beach resort. Everybody's out there chilling, enjoying life. Like, I don't feel like I want to create. There's nothing to create based on. There's nothing to push back against. But when there's some chaos, it's like, ooh, let's get cooking. Right, but what do you go to? You go to cigarettes when you have chaos? What do you go to? Well, for me, it's work. Like, that becomes a drug. Because there's something to work for. There's something to work towards. Peace. There's some so, something to solve. There's a problem to solve. There's no problems to solve. Like, I ask all the time at my shows, I'm, I'll ask people, I'll be like, What's go what is bothering you right now? What's the issue right now? What are you pushing back against? And people just look at me dumbfounded. They're like, oh, because nothing's going on. I got such a great team around me yeah. that professionally, chaos is like very much at a minimum mm. because everybody does what they're supposed to do yeah. and keeps the chaos for me. Yeah. Ooh, so therefore, I'm able to focus fuses. on creative yeah. and focus on my personal well-being. Yes. Because if my personal well-being isn't good, Nothing else matters. Yeah. You know what I mean? So when you ask me what's the one thing that grounds you that you tend to overlook, I would probably say family. Because there's nothing that grounds you like family. Yeah. To me. When yeah. I, and, and it's just something that you, ex, 
expect to be there so much. I feel, yeah, I feel guilty with that. But shit. that's what I'm saying. But you expect it to be there so much, and you're always working, you're always on the go. So those mm-hmm. moments when you're in the house and like, damn, I really provided a great life for my family. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And this, these are the people that love me unconditionally. You know yeah. what I mean? And like having daughters is different because it's just it's love all day, except for the 13 yeah. year olds. Even though she loves me, but you know it's. Now, now I'm at the point I got to prove my love to her. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. he does. Like whatever. She's like every day. It's a prove to me you love me. Or maybe that's just my brain thinking yeah, like that. But that's how it feels. Bad. Like every day I got to prove to her that I love her. But it's just like, um, yeah, family, man. Like family. We tend to take family for granted, Joe. We really do. What about, mm. okay, how, how often do you see your parents? Not enough. Yeah, just, 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 I'm about to fuck your shit up right now. How Not enough at all. Parents? Not enough. I see my mom this weekend. Three times a year, four times a year? All right, three times a year. A little bit more for me, but yeah. Right? All right, 10 times a year. You're three. I'm probably, maybe I see them tops once a month and I live close to them. We both live in Manhattan. How many more years do you think they'll live? Yeah, This is where shit gets fucked up. So let's say you see them three times a year. Let's say your parents, and we're being generous, live like what, another 30 years? Three times that's, a year, 30 years. That's, that's generous, bro. And that's, that's generous. generous. That's generous. 30. So let's say it's 20. Yeah, I mean, I hope they do, though. Yeah. Right, we hope, but let's say it's do. 20. Look. That's 60 more total times you'll hug your mom. Whew. Wow. You know what I mean? Like 60 100%. more total times. 100%, bro. You get him everything you, you, now. Your pops will say that he, you know, he's proud of you and, and, and loves what you're doing. And uh-huh. 100%. Total. In your life, if we're lucky. When I start looking at shit like that, man, I I felt so guilty. That's why you shouldn't take it for granted. I mean, but I'm like that with like everybody in my life that knows, that that I know loves me and I love them. You know what I mean? Because it's like, we're not with every, I'm not with everybody every day. Like, and there's more people, like, you know, I'm with Wax all the time. You know what I mean? I, I, you know, I talk to Dolly all the time. I see my wife every day, you know what I mean? But Sometimes you can tend, you take that for granted. The fact that you see them every day. So it, yes. it can go either way. The no, fact no. you don't see them or the fact you see them every yes. day. You know what I mean? It's just like, yo, man, don't take that shit for granted. When you got like people around you that ground you, yeah. like literally ground you. Like, you yeah. know, you can walk in this room and just be you. Yeah. Don't take that shit for granted. Yeah. No, for don't real. take that shit for granted. And it's usually your family and friends that you tend to overlook. It's like, oh, they're going to be there. Yeah. yeah. That's how we've been with the women in our life forever, right? At least me, I can speak on my, like the, I'm always used to women being there for me, right? That's why when I started hearing, you know, these conversations about black women saying how they feel overlooked and black women feel like they're disrespected and their men aren't there for them, I understand it mm. because you just expect them to be there because yeah. they've always been your mom, your grandma, your aunts, you know what I mean? So you just take them for granted. Like, oh, that's Literally. just, that's they going to be there. You, you know what I mean? What you got to eat from you, auntie? Don't even care how she, what happened to her. Mm. That's it. You, you ain't, ain't asking how she doing. Yeah, like, you know what I mean? You ain't yeah. asking if she good. Like, you come in, we come in there and do the label. You know, yeah, you ain't yeah, going yeah. to you let need. your mom and your anything aunties, and, you know, but you yeah. don't ask, you don't, you don't really invest in them and see how they are. Mm. They you just expect. are. Yeah, you just mm. expect. And we, t- we, we, we tend to take that for granted. Like, literally. And then, like, one day it's just like, if you, if you're smart, you have a wake up call and you start moving with intention when it comes to the women in your life. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And you start pouring into them the way they poured into <sighs> yeah. you. They did it first for years. They did it first for years. I'm so watching how she takes care of I'm like, how do you do? I cannot do that. Women hold it down yeah. and always have. They do. And, and what did we reward yeah. them with? No, nah, we hold it down too. They got a house. We rewarded them with yeah, Snoop Dogg. Nah, Listen to nah, Snoop Doggy no, Style album in the no, Chronic. No, no, we hold it down. Nah, we hold it down too, man. The guys who do that too. part, you got to salute these guys. We're doing better do now. Part. We're doing a lot better now. But the God reason we're doing a lot better now because we're moving with intention. And the cracker is gone. The crack what? It, what? The crackhead era is gone. I mean, oh, the crack crackhead is gone. era. Like, they, I mean, you yeah, gotta understand yeah. that would take a lot of us out of the houses and stuff like that. And yeah. They taking our OGs away. Nah, that's true. They want to take that's control true. of our, yeah. our our towns and shit like that. And they see yeah. us growing, but yeah. don't. Yeah, I got a lot of fathers out there who actually do their part. If you get a good partnership, yeah. the mom is very important, but the dad is very important too. Yeah. And we letting the women lead. Let them lead. Long. I can't do that. Nah, shit. I can't do it. Let them leave. The house, nothing. I yeah. get. Oh, I'm. I'm like one of the kids. What you need me to do? I'm definitely one of the kids. 
<laughs> hey, I might be the what biggest you, kid. What you yeah. need me to do? I'm definitely the most where, emotional in the house. I don't know where shit is in my house. Like my friends come over and they'll ask for like a cup. Yeah, yeah like I don't know where the cups are. I that truly like, do not know. I don't. Why know. you asking me for? You don't see? Yeah, <laughs> she's right here. Like you want you see the screwdriver stuff. or something? How let me for a screwdriver or the or the blower or something that the I don't even right. know either, man. Well, Speaking of my you, angel, I got that. My angel texting me right now. What'd she say? Mm, something about something. It's all good, but that's how just how I know it's God. That's just it's just God. Like I will say this though, like because I'm on the road and constantly busy and I don't have tons of time with my girl. I cherish that time. So I feel like I'm not wasting it. I feel like we're taking advantage of it and like we're super intentional about mm -hmm. it. And I think that if you don't have that, like if you have all this free time, you guys can end up just like hanging out and just watching movies all the time, but you're not really like finding ways where you guys will do something interesting and like enjoy the time. Maybe that's what y'all like doing though. Yeah, I Say like what? Maybe that's what y'all like doing. We do it as well, but like, uh, the, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but like, I think it's easy to get in a routine when you're comfortable with someone where you don't continue to try to do things that excite you both. And because we have limited time together, we are trying to take advantage of those times. And uh -huh. that doesn't mean necessarily an activity, but like going, hey, let's turn off the phone. Let's turn on the phone and like talk to each other, enjoy each other. But I bet you if I was at home seven o'clock every single night, we wouldn't do that. We just kind of sit and enjoy yeah, yeah, and like yeah, not, yeah. not really take for granted that we have that time with yeah. each other. I think the biggest thing to realize is just intention, man. Just be, yeah. that's my, that's my word for the rest of my life. Be intentional. Everything has to have intention. Mm -hmm. Like even when somebody brings something to me, I don't care what it is. I'm like, what's the intention behind it? Yeah. I need, everything has to have intention. Your relationships, you know, your, 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 your projects that you're creating, create no, creatively, no everything. No your shit. day, when you wake up in the day, no what's your shit. intention for the day? Yeah. You can't just wake up and yeah. go. What's your intention for the day, man? No, so just, shit. Did success change how much you cared about things? A hundred percent. What kind of question is that? <laughs> thousand percent. Who, who's the idiot telling us otherwise? I'm just saying it's it's really interesting, like how how like important like political issues and all this other kind of shit is. And then you oh, get, get there, yeah. some success. Like it like in terms of when I mean success, I don't mean like Twitter followers. I mean like you have multi millions some, of dollars. Yeah, like some financial success where you where you're good, and all of a sudden these little like things that you know people bicker about, but they don't actually really care about. You're like, do I want to get riled oh, no, no, up? No, 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 I'm with you on that. that. No, 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 no. I, I thought you were talking about just life, other things, but that stuff, no. It actually makes me care about it less. Yeah, less. Oh, you're like, fuck. you're like, you actually. I used to be in that little rat race where I care so much about this topic that was popular this week, and now I'm like. This is not going to be popular a week from I now. Care less. Do yeah. I want to dedicate mental no. energy to this bullshit no. topic that they forcing us to fight about? No, I no, you don't know nothing, and that's the way to go. But when you don't have anything else to rely on, you're like, oh, I gotta, I gotta care about this. It's like almost it becomes like um like sports. You're like, oh, it's Sunday. Yeah. I'm caring who the Cowboys are playing this yes. week. Because but realistically, don't it don't fucking matter. It's football. Yeah. Like you start to realize like the politics, the what? When you don't have a life, you would say that when your team is three and six. Of course. Hey, guess my what? My team is six and two. I didn't even know my team is three and six. Exactly. Oh, okay. You shouldn't. Yeah. Well, you see, you see, see how you just got red just now? You got yeah. pissed off. My Dallas Cowboys are six and two. We're you. going to Super Bowl. Yeah. Cowboys are life, baby. Yeah. yeah. Of course. I don't know what you're talking about. But, but You had me until you said that. But you know how like you're <laughs> yeah, opting into attention, the Cowboys. Like, no. You're not from Dallas. You're not even from Texas. Didn't have a choice. You did have a choice. Nope. Yes, you did. My daddy. You do everything your daddy my does? My daddy. You I, do everything your daddy does? I did. <laughs> <laughs> Until I made a, co a cognitive decision not to. But my daddy tased the Marine on 9-11 at MetLife Amazing. Stadium. I know. During the Cowboys-Jets game. Amazing. Now cap. you tell me you think hey, I had a hey, choice. Get some respect cap. on that star. It happened. I call it cap. No, Google it. It's real shit. Huh? Now that Taylor, you can, Taylor, Google that Taylor. one. Taylor, <laughs> Taylor. <laughs> Google, Google that one. That one will come up immediately. Exactly. Nah, nah, okay. teasing, but you understand what I'm saying is like we choose the things that we want to get emotionally involved in. And I guess, I don't know, for some reason, like when when I had less financial stability. You cared about dumb shit more. Way more, yeah. bro. And, and now it don't affect, I don't give a fuck about And, and I'm asking you guys this because I wanted to make sure that this isn't my own thing and that this is a function of stability. It's like when you have your stability, you're less emotionally charged by these issues. Bro, I never give a fuck about nothing though, bro. So you never yeah. cared. But like Charlotte, you cared. 
I you care, care too. What? You wanted to have the hot take on this thing that was happening in the news and that shit. No, I didn't really care. I Early just, on, you no, did. No, no, no. I never cared. I just didn't know no better. I just gave a fuck about dumb shit. I was trying to survive. So it's just like literally everything that was out there, like, oh, I'm going to talk about this. I'm going to talk about this person. Yeah. I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about this. I'm going to talk about that. Why? I'm going to talk about this. I felt that was my job. You felt it was your job. I felt it was my job. And then you got some stability. Well, two things. Number one, um, man, at, at least for me, like you get older and you start to like see the game and realize that, man, when you were on the outside looking in, yeah. you just didn't know what the fuck you was talking about. Yeah. Mm. So you just violate. And, and by Slow the way, down I now. see that now. So mm. it's like, like, it's the craziest thing where imagine somebody trying to tell, tell me about you. Mm. Are you even crazier? Somebody trying to tell you about you. Mm. That's all this era we're in now is. Mm. It's all of these people who don't know us from a, don't know us other than what they hear on the microphones and literally trying to tell us about our personal life. And I think about it 10 years ago, that was me. Mm. I was trying to tell other people about them and who they are. So do you pretend to care about issues because you feel like that's the bridge to making it? Um... I'm not saying there aren't still issues that bother me and no, excite I talk, that I talk, reaction. I talk about issues now because I genuinely care about exactly. Them. But yeah. now that's why I love doing my TV show. Like the stuff you see me talk about on my TV show, the stuff about. I want to talk about. Yeah. Exactly. But now I can't muster up the care for like the frivolous shit. Whereas before, I would be engaged with it. Can't do we it. Got time. Can't time do is, it. And I'm now. trying to understand what that is a function of. Are we getting older and we understand with time? That's what we I think appreciate it is. time now. I, I think it is. I've appreciated time before. And, and you Ooh. understand time is money. Like the shit you said yeah, about the yeah. movie earlier. You spent 12 hours on a movie set. In your mind, you like, you know how much money 12 hours is? Yo, that's the thing. I'm paying to do the movie. Like if I got to cancel the show, which I did, like I'm paying them to do it. So now I'm looking at this in terms of like cost, uh, was it time uh, cost analysis or whatever yeah, it is, yeah, yeah. where it's just like, where, you know, I understand doing this thing could lead to other things mm -hmm. that could provide security for, you know, my friends and family. It's an investment. It's an investment. A hundred percent. It's an investment. Same thing with family. Like, I feel like certain times you want to go do something, things on the weekend. I'm like, I got to fly over here to go do something. Yeah. And it's like, uh, do I stay here with her? To invest in our family and future or mm -hmm. invest in our family and future. Mm -hmm. So which one do you do? Yeah. Yeah. And and she's going to want time naturally. And we want her to want time. Yeah. Respect. We don't ever want our girl to be like, don't hang out with me. Yeah. Go ahead. Go yeah, 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 please. Yeah, please yeah, be away. All anyway. Fuck yeah. that. Come on. But we also have to be mature enough to go. Balance. Hey, I need to provide security for us. I need to go hit these comedy clubs during the week and work out new jokes so I could go on tour and do a whole new tour and continue building this fucking tour and do arenas so that we can live the life that we talk about and dream about. I need to do that. And that means I got to sacrifice time that I want to spend with you. Yes. We want to spend time with you too. And, yeah. And the yeah. crazy part is, you know, we yeah. all uh, act like we got time. You know Sorry. what I'm saying? Like, yo, my plan yeah. is 50. I'm out. And I want to spend the rest of my life you know, I run these companies from afar. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Uh -huh. And like, you know, like be sitting on the money that I made over the past decade or whatever yes. and let the family do what they want. But I want to, the reason I want that is because I want to spend the rest of my life actually going to search for the meaning of life. I want to go do ayahuasca and fucking, you know, grow a long beard and like yeah. be doing yoga every goddamn day. That's like I really fire. do. Like I'm not even joking when Put I say like, I, water I really want to just practice my, I want to go live on an island somewhere and just like, don't do anything but try to find that ultimate peace of mind. Like, $20 million in the bank is a million dollars a year in interest. Can you live on a million dollars a year? Can I? Yeah. I'm crazy. just saying, if you can get 20 million in the bank. My lifestyle ain't crazy. I don't do that. I don't, I'm not one of these guys. You don't see me in no Bentley. Yeah. You don't see me in no Phantom. Yeah. You ain't see me out here buying no big ass crazy jewelry. You know what I mean? And, 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 and by the way, this is what I talk about when I have these conversations about you know, understanding business. Like, you know, you got so many people out here that's so pumped up about wanting to own 100% of nothing, yeah. right? Instead of owning 50% of a multi-million dollar Five industry, percent, right? Yeah. So you know what I like? I like being able to provide opportunity and employment. You know what I mean? And let these major corporations that we partner with fit the bill. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and, in the, and in the meantime, we're building our own generational wealth mm -hmm. while this other company while this company is fitting the bill yeah. so it's like that's 
that's what I'm here. To, that's what I'm here to do. So when so when you talk about living beyond your means, I don't I don't live beyond my means, and the overhead is taken care of. Yeah. I'm just I'm just that's saying, good business to me. I'm just saying in Great terms business. of like retirement, like I always try to think about things like how do you back into what you need. So if I if if you know what you need to live on per year, like let's say you want to live on $2 million a year and you know that you yeah. want to do that forever, then you know- You can easily do that. If, 40 million then you know you need 40 in the bank now. Yeah. Now, if you want to keep grinding and keep working and keep you know making money and making your money make money, that's some shit I'm trying to understand now. I could live off five in the bank. You could live off five in the bank and hell what yeah. the interest- of that would be. Okay, yeah, hell yeah. What's 20% of yo, 5 million? Yo, when we What's start throwing these numbers million? around, like numbers, 20%, 20, like 200,000 times right. 5. 250. You just make 200, what? I think it's 250,000. It's 250,000? No. Your crib, if your crib, your crib's paid off. $250,000 a year, yeah. Yeah, if your crib's paid off, like you, yeah. you living, like you, man. Of please. course you could. There's no question that you can. Yeah. There's, there's things I got going on in my life right now that I'm going to see Royalties and statements off forever. Yeah, like the book business is great. Yeah, <laughs> you know what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking yeah. about my own personal books. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like now forget the imprint. Like my own personal shook one and black privilege. I get statements sometimes like, oh shit. Yeah. You know what I mean. And that started like immediately, right? So it's just like whatever. God is good, man. I'm like I'm not tripping off that. The only thing I want to do is be able to live comfortably for the rest of my life. Make sure the people around me are good. And if I'm doing everything I'm supposed to be doing now, everybody will be set up. Mm. And we'll be fine. And, you know, catch me on the island somewhere, man. Yeah. Straight up. Ayahuasca it out. Yeah. That's what, that's what I'm aiming for. Planes. What do you think you're going to find? What do you mean? I don't know. I don't know. Life. But I can't wait to do it. I yeah, can't wait to figure it out. Somebody told me about shrooms and they said make, they be so small. And it's like everything else is just so big. Mm. And I'm like... I want ayahuasca. I want to see that other dimension, bro. Even though I feel like I go in and out of the other other dimensions now, I want to really feel that, it. That's not the same thing, the mushroom? Nah. Ayahuasca is a plant they put in the tea. I mean, you can put the mushrooms in the tea too, but I'm doing. I'm trying to do ayahuasca this year before the year's over, bro. Do it, that's man. That's my goal. Ayahuasca. You did you it? Feel, no, I, I don't know. I, it's, it, I was know? curious in it, but I didn't need it. And like, my whole feeling is like, if I don't, need it if I don't if I'm not yearning for it if I'm not like really wanting it then I don't want to push it because I don't know the way I kind of look at life right now is like I'm driving towards something and I'm using my anxiety and I'm using my insecurity as a furnace okay. right that's the engine it's like fuel. so it's like that's the fuel for me to get what I desire uh -huh. and then I think when I retire I'm going to try to unlearn this life that I've learned to live, which is working all the time, grinding, striving for more. Yeah, if you do it right myself. now, you might get, you just might be like, yeah, okay. I, I'm not trying to do that work all the time, driving, pushing myself when I got grandkids and shit. Like, yeah, nah. I want to learn how to do nothing and enjoy that day. I don't know how to do that just yet. I fall apart, but I do one day want to be able to just sit on the beach and do nothing and feel yeah, like right. that well, was okay. Well, here's the thing, right? To your point, the reason I'm cool with that is because my something is empowering other people, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So I like getting my Clarence Avon on. I like getting my my Sean Jay-Z Carter on, meaning like, yeah. I don't, I, I'm, I'm gonna sit on that beach, but I'm, I'm okay, I might be the person that's the head of this company. But what if you exactly. did nothing? That is nothing to no, me. No, 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 no. Like, Being ahead of a company is something. Are you okay enough with yourself where you can do nothing for anyone else and nothing for yourself and that day is still okay? Yeah, I don't know. That's a good question. Because it feels like you're paying. I, I answered that like Aaron Rodgers. I said yeah, but then I was like, I'm a, I'm immunized. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't know. But you know what I'm saying? It feels like you're paying a debt. It's like, well, I feel I can feel good about myself because I'm throwing out all these assists. Mm -hmm. But I want to get to the point where I can just feel good about myself sitting on this beach and like that. That'd be cool. That'd be okay. That'd be I and just enjoying I, I, a nice I think, cup of I think tea. We in a mode, man. I think we in a mode. And I was in um, New Orleans and I was talking to an older guy. And he was like, Yo, "All my friends are dead." Yeah, he said. Dang. He said because they all stopped, and the, the way we move, yeah, like I think if I slow down now, I'm, I'm only 38. I might, my problems might be happening to me because I've been moving hard, been flying for years, no, that's like true. nonstop. And Not it's like, me. How I don't do feel I slow that way. Down? I think no, no, no. I think what he's saying is interesting. It's like oftentimes old people stop working; they just they die. die. I get it. But I, get I think it. it's because yeah. they're not putting the work in to switch their brain. 
their brain just gets miserable because they need the work, but they're no longer doing it. But like, what if they made their new goal to be able to just enjoy things in life, I think, I man? Think That's yoga, how I feel. Yeah, yoga yeah. and stuff probably trans do that great That's transition. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's Maybe what I'm saying. Down. Go yeah. swim That's in. right. When we go on vacation now, we going on spiritual retreats and stuff yeah. like that. That's what we do. Yeah. Like literally. Start so I'm, transferring I'm, your mind. I'm all in. I'm into that now. So 10 years from now, when I really phase out. It's a wrap. Bye. Yeah. Peace. Peace, God. Peace, God. Plus, what we done did it by then. Like, we done did, I, I really do feel like in the next decade, like, if y'all thought the last decade was dope, the next decade where every, just, I, think about where we started 10 years from now. Yeah. And think about where we are right now. Just think about the last wow. couple of years, everything that we are positioning ourselves to do, and yeah. think about where we're going to be in the next 10. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah, that's wild. Think about that. I want everybody just to sit back and think about that. Just think about where do you think these guys are going to be in the next Decade yeah. based off how they're positioning themselves now. Yeah. yeah. Position. Just think about it. Just yeah. think about it. Light the torches. You think things change just like that? Facts. Literally. I don't forget how y'all was talking about me last year. Uh -huh. Motherfuckers. Uh -huh. I don't forget shit. They talk about me like that my whole right. life. <laughs> I don't forget shit. So that's what you're gonna learn how to do. Forget. I done forgot. I said watch this. <laughs> okay, Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> As always, if you listen to this podcast, you think you're smart, you think you're intelligent, you think you're brilliant, you're absolutely right. But if you listen to this podcast and you think we're just a couple idiots who don't know shit, you're right too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening. Mm -hmm.